Greetings, travelers and adventurers. Before we begin, I think it would be a good idea for you all to introduce your characters. I'm a paladin, so obviously call me Paladon, short for Paladonald, or call me Sir Donald, Master Don, Sexy What's Don. What's up, guys? I'm Obarman Dornwood, an elf archer. Very nice. Paladon and Obarman, decent fantasy name so far. Now it's your turn, Joe. This is a role-playing game, Joe. Why did you come as yourself? How am I myself? Aren't you dressed as an old pedophile? Motherfucker, I'm a cleric. This seems mildly inappropriate. Guys, chill out. Right, so I am a human cleric heralding from the pious, God-fearing settlements of Illazor. I'm proficient in healing, and my name is Joey. Great name. Nice one, Joey. That, that name kind of sucks, no? Well, come on now. Don't listen to him, Joey. But um, thanks again for doing this, Ben. None of us are experienced dungeon masters, so we thought you'd be perfect to ease us into this world. It is my pleasure. Yeah, it's so nice to meet you, blah, 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 but can we start? Right, so the journey begins. Our adventurers set off through the land of Urahelm. Yawn. The weather is... Excuse me, what? God damn it, Don. What? I'm just yawning. It's a natural body function. No, you said yawn. You didn't actually yawn. Behave, Paladonald. Don't worry about these leftists, Ben. I'm on your side. Okay, then. Where was I? I'm here. So, the adventurers arrive at the town of Kaldheim, searching for work. But they hear murmurs amongst the civilians of a fierce bandit camp looming outside the walls. Now what? Now we take our turns. Yeah, but where are the pieces? Where's the board? Any four pieces to connect? It's all in the imagination. Yahtzee! You say what you want to do, and I roll the dice to see if it's successful. I attack Ben. You cannot attack the dungeon master. I attack the dork master. Didn't you tell these guys how to play beforehand, Barack? I did. He's just being stupid. I'll go first. I know how to play. No, you do not. Well, I played it before, back in 1881. I was a bard and would yodel for my friends. <laughs> They'd call me Joe Barden. 1881? Barack, what's up with your friends? They're just having fun. No, it's true. God damn it, Joe. Let's say, hypothetically. That was true, then what do you- Don't bother with that, Benjamin. He's just at that age. Let's play. Okay, I search for a nearby inn, hoping to find some info about the bandit camp. I will join Obarman. I will join them too, but I'm at the front. All right. The three of you enter this bustling inn, patrons all around, getting drunk and having a good time. Paladon approaches the dwarven bartender. What do you say? Dwarven, gross. I asked to see their work permit. For fuck's sake. Um, okay. So we'll do a charisma check. Would you like to persuade or intimidate? Intimidate. They don't deserve my kindness. Very well. You got a three? The dwarven bartender looks at you confused and walks away. She will now ignore you. A she? A woman? Why didn't you say so? Pardon me, milady. Where are my manners? Are, are you an illegal? You lost the charisma check, Paladin. She won't talk to you anymore. Bullshit! I'm Paladon, the golden god... The most charming man in all the lands. There's no way I can fail a charisma check. But you did. That's a fact. No worries, Paladon. Let me talk to her. I walk up to her and say, Excuse me, miss. We've heard of your town's struggle against bandits and want to help. Is there anyone hiring bounty hunters? The bartender looks at you with concern. She has her guard up thanks to Paladon. Whatever. I try to ease the tension by telling a joke. Okay, another charisma check for performance. And it's a success. Hell yeah. Way to go, a barman. Bullshit. You tell a funny joke about Paladon's small hands to the bartender, and she giggles. Feeling at ease, she points you to a hooded man sitting alone at the back of the inn. Bullshit. You all right? No way you have more charisma than me, whatever. It's fine. It's okay, Paladon. There will be plenty more chances to win roles. I attack the bartender. Jesus Christ. Aren't you Jewish? Correct. Me too. Nope. As the dungeon master, I must advise. Attacking the bartender will lead to everyone in the inn and the town's guard to come after you most likely killing you. I attack Ben Shabibu. Stop it, Don. I call the town guard to arrest the immigrant dwarf. No. Okay, slow down. What do you want to do? I swing my blade towards her head. I warn you, though. She's a dwarf with high agility. Plus, you failed the intimidation, so she's even more alert. You'll need a 17 or above. Oh, nice. A 17. Are you serious? Not good. Oh, Lord. Well, Paladin swings his mighty blade in a horizontal arc, slicing the beloved bartender's head cleanly off. Yeah, I like this game. Well, you've kind of ruined it. There is statistically no way you can get out of this alive. Everyone in the inn stares in disbelief and horror. Other groups of adventurers, warriors, and the town guard are alerted. They approach you with weapons drawn, ready to kill. I do another persuasion roll. Try to convince them the bartender was working for the bandits. Clever idea, Obarman. You roll and fail. The people do not believe in your lies and get angrier. It's okay, lads. I got this. I intimidate them, calling them pussy-ass bitches. A two- the people are now enraged with fury. Nothing can save you now. Almighty goddess Ezrandria, I call upon your divine blessing once more. It is I, your loyal servant Joey. I ask thee to enchant your calming holiness upon this town to make them forget their anger and save us from this peril. 
You now roll with disadvantage. Two dice, the lowest number will decide your fate. But anything lower than 20 means the game is over. So it's been fun, guys. Thanks for- Snake eyes. You got two 20s. My goodness, critical success. That's my boy, my Joey. My hero, my savior, my cleric. I don't believe this. Well, Joey calls upon the divine favor of his goddess. A holy blinding light enshrouds the town and fades away. Everyone has forgot about the incident and the dead bartender has miraculously come back to life as if she never got beheaded. This is so fun. I like it. Me too. So I guess you adventurers want to talk to the hooded man in the back. I behead the bartender again. No. No. I restrain Donald taking away his weapon. I use a calm spell on Paladin. No one can stop me. Okay, I roll for restraint and it fails. Don overpowers Obarman. I roll for the calm spell. A one, critical failure. It fails and backfires onto Joey, making him confused. I am inevitable. Ugh, I roll for a beheading. Um, of course, it's 18. Bye-bye, dwarf. You know your character is meant to be lawful good? Exactly. I am the law and she's illegal. She's not. It's a dwarven town. Work permits and national documents aren't required. You guys are the immigrants. Oh. Her head comes clean off. Everyone in the town comes to attack you again. I run. I can't do this, Barack. This is too stupid. It's fine. We're all having fun, right? I attack Joey. You are fucking Joey. Jesus Christ, Barack. Thanks for inviting me, but I'm leaving. Your friends are fucking stupid. Yo, what the fuck, bro? Don't talk about them like that. Time to leave, Ben Shabby bitch. I just said I'm leaving. Yeah, there's the door, bitch. Listen, kid, the fact is, this is how we roll. I just feel like this all goes against the sanctity of the game. You feel? Well, guess what? Facts don't care about your feelings. Fuck this! This game is awesome. Yeah, let's play again soon. Different dungeon master, though. I don't like his small dick energy. Hey, be nice. Ben is also my friend. I prefer big dick. What the fuck, Don? That's a bit too sussy for me, bro. No fuck's sake. I meant, ah, oh, fuck it. When are we playing again? We should totally do Dungeons and Dragons, but set in the universes of games we like. Oh my god, yeah. Imagine a fantasy fanfic adventure of us doing Dungeons and Dragons Elden Ring edition. Elden Ring, DND, Fallout, DND, Zelda, DND. The possibilities are endless. So many YouTube video ideas. We're not uploading these sessions to YouTube. We are not, but he will. Who the fuck are you talking about? The one who clones. Bro, we're not role playing anymore. You can stop. Maybe we should role play a psychiatrist to fix Joe's broken brain. Welcome, Vault Dwellers, Raiders, Ghouls, and Mutants. Uh, introduce yourselves. The name's Slick Brick. Uh, I'm, of course, a disciple of Benny, who is head of the New Vegas Chairman, which gives me a bonus to charisma and luck. I'm, of course, leader of the Brotherhood of Steel. Nope. Nope. I like it. You can't be that OP at the start. Power armor is too much, let alone leader of the Brotherhood. Shut up, bitch. Don't kill my vibe. I'm trying to impress Elon. Well, color me impressed. You can simp later, but for now, change your character. Fine, but help me pick. I can't decide between all these. I'm ready. Do I go with this or this? Oh, God. Or this? Oh, uh, cutie. What the fuck? Why do I have so many fingers? It's like the AI still needs to learn. Enough with the AI shit. Don't worry about the fingers, Don. It's lore-friendly for Fallout. We can say it's a radiation mutation. Okay, what about this? What the fuck? Why are you a sofa? Radiation mutation. God damn it, Don. Hurry and pick so we can start. Okay, I picked this one. Damn, I'm looking good. Yeah, you look like a handsome and a good... Thanks, buddy. Very well. So now introduce yourselves, Donald and Joe. Okay, so I am a leader nope. of the... I am an initiate of the Brotherhood. Call me... E e Elon. I love it. That's just going to get confusing. Jesus, Barack, always moaning, shake my head, SMH, TBH. Fine, call me Tesla. What about Teslard? Because you're a lard ass. Shut the fuck up. Okay. I'm Donsworth, like the robot. I have a bonus to strength, and of course it's me, so I have exceptional charisma. Not bad at all. Hee hee hee. I like it. Now who are you meant to be, Joe? It's a strange mystery. Oh my god. I see it now, that's so cool. The Mysterious Stranger. Who? What's your name, Joe? I'm the Mysterious Stranger. My identity is a secret, but you can call me Joe Biden. I have a bonus with perception, strength, and agility. Very nice. Okay, so let's begin the campaign. It's good to see you again, Ben. My name's Elon. Hmm? Elon Musk. Right, and what did I say? Ben. Yes, what's the issue? It's not the same name. 
Are you sure? Unfortunately, our previous dungeon master, Ben Shapiro, got into a horrible car accident, leaving him in a wheelchair. He'll never walk again. Skill issue. Poor guy. But maybe he would have been safer if he drove a Tesla. <laughs> hey, good one, Elon. Call me Mr. Musk. Wow, what an honor. The fuck? Right. So the adventure begins. Slick, Donsworth, and Joe leave the confines and safety of Vault 420 and emerge out into the unforgiving wastelands. Damn, look at this post-apocalyptic shithole. What a mess. Reminds me of the towns your drones hit Barack. Shut the fuck up, Donsworth. And stay in character. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Reminds me of the time all your drone strikes destroyed countless cities. Slick brick. You fucking bitch. I attacked Donsworth. What the fuck? Why are you attacking me? Guys, come on. I thought you only target Middle Eastern. I use my vats for increased perception and aim. Do a dexterity check and target one of Don's kneecaps. Before that, I roll for a charisma check, persuading Barack to piss his pants. How will that help? Donsworth rolls. Uh, and it's a four. Slick brick does not piss his pants. Say bye to your kneecap, bitch. I roll to shoot. 16. Direct hit. No! Donsworth falls to the ground, screaming in pain and agony, bleeding out. Get in character and scream. Ah! Fuck's sake. Sorry, guys, I lost my cool. Just say you're in character. Right, right. Yeah, don't mess with Slick Brick. Ah! I use my divine holy healing to cure Donsworth's ailments. What? Wrong universe, Joe. Who? Take this stim pack and heal him. Oh, right. I use a stim pack on Donsworth's knee, patching it up as good as new. Do you want to roll? Yes, I do a constitution saving throw. It's a 12. You stop Donsworth's bleeding and he can walk again, but with a limp. He'll need more time to fully recover. Great fucking job, Barack. I'm now a cripple like Ben Shabibo. Sounds like a personal problem. Okay, can we continue? I want to see what this universe has to offer. The presidential wanderers continue their journey across the decrepit landscape. In the distance, they see what looks to be... Eh, oh no, a rad scorpion. This large mutated scorpion has a deadly stinger. Wait, let him finish. And usually comes in packs. All right, well, we have limited ammo, limited supplies. We don't need to be reckless with this scorpion. Limited supplies? Oh my fucking God, we're going to starve to death. I see a small one-room building over to the right. Perhaps we can lay low in there. Good idea. We can look out the window until the scorpion goes back underground. Wonderful. So the presidential survivors enter what was once a public restroom. Stalls and urinals and broken sinks fill this room up. Jesus Christ! We're going to run out of water and dehydrate to death. I can't handle this. No, no, we're actually fine on that front. I do a wisdom check and use my perception skills. Very well. And what do you hope to see? Some food, some water, anything to drink. You roll and get a 19. Donsworth is able to scope out all the food and water in this public toilet. Unfortunately, the only food are some chems called mentats. Mm. And the dirty radiated water in the toilet. I eat the mentats and drink the toilet water. Jesus Christ, Don. Be careful with the chems in this universe. They're highly addictive. It's my job to explain the world, Joe. I'm the mysterious stranger. Sorry, mysterious stranger. Who? Donsworth consumes the Mentats, temporarily increasing his intelligence and perception. Oh boy, sorry, morons. I'm the smartest one now. He also drinks the highly radiated toilet water, improving his hydration, but also increasing his rad slightly. I'm smart as fuck, I'm hydrated as fuck, and I'm rad as fuck. I keep drinking the toilet water until my hydration is full. Jesus, you really are a dung eater. I keep drinking. We're not remotely close to dying of thirst. Drinking. Donsworth gets severe radiation poisoning. His bowels are burning and he drops to the ground. What the fuck? Wow, didn't see that coming. I don't have any rat away to cure him. All I have are lots of berry mentats and jet fuel. Donsworth's bowels let out a loud belch, alerting nearby creatures. Oh my god. No! Shit, we're going to be surrounded. And Don can't even move. I attack Slick with a sharp maneuver. Nope, you hold that in so more creatures don't come. We'll have to leave Donsworth here and lure the creatures away. Fuck's sake, Don. We're about to sacrifice ourselves for you whilst all you do is shit everywhere. Whatever, at least I won't die of thirst. You fucking idiot. The mysterious stranger leaves his bag of chems with Donsworth and then leaves the restroom with Slick Brick. All the rad scorpions are now focused on them. Excuse me, I'm the dungeon master here. Sorry, Elon. No problem, Joe. Call me Joe. The scorpions start chasing them as Donsworth continues to writhe in pain in the toilets. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay, I do. A wisdom check. Try to find any weapons that can help. A 17. Not bad. You find a rusty lock container beneath some rubble ahead, but there's no key. I only have one lock pick. Shit, what if it breaks? You got this. I roll for a dexterity check to lock pick this container. My goodness, an 18. The container is unlocked. Okay, okay, okay. Erm, I activate my New Vegas Fortune Finder luck perk. I don't think it works like that but I'll allow it with a roll. I roll to increase the chances of finding a good weapon inside. Oh, my spaghetti monster. You got a 19. Good job. 
Okay, I open the container, and it's... And it's... Oh, what's this? Is that an M42 Fat Man mini nuke launcher? Holy shit! My goodness, DJ, you praise the sun on... I roll to steal it. You're nowhere near us, dumbass. The scorpions surround Joe and Slick. They are out of options. Damn. Unfortunately, I... We might have to use this nuke on the ground we're standing on. Killing all the creatures, but also ourselves. Man. I, I don't want to go, man. Me neither. At least fucking Don will be okay. Sorry about shooting you, bro. Guys, no. Yeah, let's do it. He can live on for our sake. No, 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 guys, stop. I will roll one last time to nuke the ground and destroy all the creatures. No, 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 Elon, fucking do something, please. I can't do anything. No, no, fuck this. I can't let you guys die alone out there. Because, boys, this world ain't worth being in without you. Don't, I'm emotional enough already. Let us die. Elon, I eat all the chems Joe left for me. What you all don't realize is I've been holding in this radiation shard all this time. Wow, what a man. The fuck? I roll to let out an ultimate move to save my friend. OMG, a 20. This is truly astonishing. Calm down, Elon. Your enthusiasm is distracting. Amazing critical success. So Donsworth lets out an emotional radiated queef. We can't hear it, but everyone understands what has happened. Rad scorpions and rabid dogs from across the wasteland forget what they were doing and start sprinting towards Donsworth. Uh, we hear thuds, hissing, pounding at the door. These creatures want to break inside and see what's up. They know the smell is coming from Donsworth, but they don't know why or how. What the fuck? That was beautiful. I'm crying in a club for real. Slowly, all the creatures surrounding the public restroom die from severe toxic poisoning. The gang is safe. Hey, I'm amazing. My hero, my shitter. Jesus Christ. It was all part of the plan, boys. What even is this game? I leave the restroom fully hydrated and meet up with the boys. The trio of heroes get back together once more, delving deeper into the desolation. But hope emerges as they see a sign for Sanctuary Hills. In the distance, you see an eager man wearing a cowboy hat and a beige duster coat. It looks like he wants to ask you something. Oh no. Is that... Yeah. It's Preston Garvey. You found his settlement. You are safe at last. Oh, okay. Wait, hold on, guys. Okay, guys, I do apologize. Uh, this has been a blast, but my private jet is waiting. I have an important meeting to attend. Ooh, what is it about? Nothing. I'm just going to tweet hate towards my lazy employees. Understandable. Have a nice day. Good seeing you, Elon. There's the door, bitch. Take care, guys. Bye, Mr. Musk. I just want to get to know you. Are you a cinephile? I'll text you later, Don. I'm blushing. Your cheeks are turning orange. Oh, wait, never mind. Bye. All right, before we finish... Let's use the Donald. What? I mean, let's use the Fat Man. Hey! Fuck you! I hand over the Fat Man mini nuke launcher to Donsworth. You've earned it, buddy. Guys, uh, I'm gonna cry. This is the best gift I've ever received. Give him hell, buddy. I roll to nuke the settlement and destroy Preston Garvey and his friends. Three, but that doesn't count. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. A 16... First try. Let's go, boys. Donsworth launches the mini nuke from the infamous Fat Man launcher straight into the heart of Sanctuary Hills, completely eviscerating and devouring every single being in this settlement. The boys kick back from afar as the mushroom cloud expands in the distance. Woohoo, what a moment. Good job, guys. Another war crime successfully complete. War. War never changes. And neither will our friendship. For sure, bro. I love it. Wonder who we can get to DM for us next. I have a friend who might be available. Awesome. Well, now that the game's over, want to go meet Miyazaki at the pub? Classic Mia. I swear he's always there. All right, let's go, brothers. First round's on him. Sorry, guys. My friend was busy playing with nuclear warheads, so he couldn't make it today. It's all right, Joey. I made some last-minute phone calls, and our dungeon master should be here any minute. Who is it? My goodness. Could it be? It is. Hello, guys. It's good to see you again. Holy mother. I appreciate you accepting my invitation, Ben. Glad you're back, Benji. These guys said you have small dick energy and a rat bastard coward and called your wheelchair a skill issue. But I said, come on, be nice. Ben is a good lad and Israel is okay. You're unbelievable. It's okay. 
I had a lot of time to think about life on my hospital bed. I saw a lot, everything, everywhere, and nothing. Then I heard a voice. God? No, Allah. Both mean the same thing. What the fuck, a Jewish Muslim? Well, I don't know yet. Will you cut your foreskin again? Why am I here? Be careful of Barack. He likes to hit your kind from above. You dumb fuck. Let's get something straight. Your drone strike numbers far exceed mine. It's called a high score. Jesus Christ, this is extremely offensive. It's okay. Our writer isn't white. Our writer? Oh, huh. I get it. You're doing the AI joke again. Who? Uh... Well, guys, I don't know what I am. I'm still searching for answers. I just see a lot of beauty in the holy books. No cap. And well, all I know is I want to be a better person and have friends. You have us, buddy. Yeah, you have him. Thanks, guys. So how about we begin what we're here for? I even set up a new campaign whilst I was in the hospital. Don has also learned how to play and will finally behave. I'm no murder hobo, but I will murder any hobos. Didn't ask. So let's start with a quick reintroduction to your characters. Come on, you all already know who I am. I go by many, many names. The Golden God, the Genetic Freak, and of course, Paladon with an O. You're shaped like an O. I attack the old man who has an affinity towards the younger demographic. We, uh, we haven't started yet. I know. I'm announcing that I'm literally going to attack him in real life. Guys, behave. Let's make it easy for Ben. He's been through enough. Okay, sorry, Barbar. I like your wheels, Benjo. Right, so I'll introduce myself now. I am Obarman, the Wood Elf Archer. I am proficient in long-range combat, sneak attacks, and high in agility. Excellent. Now your turn, Joey. I see you've got a new look. Indeed. My divine goddess has told me many things, many secrets, and I have learnt the power of the dark arts. I'm now a warlock, proficient in arcane and high in strength. Strength? Not sure it works like that, but I'm trying to be a more flexible dungeon master, so it's good. Nice wheels, Ben. Stop. I'm really glad you're here, Ben. Shut up, Don. Oh, is that how it is, huh? I can't be fucking nice to Ben now. I can't say I'm glad to see him, that I'm happy he's here. What is this bullshit liberal censorship? It's okay, Don. I appreciate what you said. Shut up, wheels. I'm talking here. You ever thought about wearing a diaper on your head? Why would I do that? To cover the shit that comes out your mouth. Yeah, good one. You're cute, Barack. Bitch, I'm adorable. Right. Okay, guys, let us begin. But why? Call me Joey. The three friends, Oberman, Joey, and Paladon, arrive in the town of Kinsville. A diverse melting pot filled with races and people from all walks of life. Gross. But just like most places, it hides some dark secrets within. Oh, boy. Okay, so I need two more gold coins to upgrade my knives. I go further into town looking for jobs. I follow Obarman on his quest. I go the other way because I ain't no follower, bitch. Obarman and Joey advance towards the busy town square and see the giant looming statue of a mighty warrior in the center. It is King Ragus, first of his name, a noble human with royal blood. It depicts his mighty struggle and triumph during the Goliath Wars. So cool. I like it. I look around the square with Joey for a job board. As your search continues, you sense someone's presence. A mysterious beggar has been watching your every step. He slowly limps towards you, covered in rags, concealing his face with a hood. Rags? Wait, you said beggar? A fucking hobo? You know how I feel about hobos. Aren't you somewhere else? I came back. Why? I got lonely. Greetings, adventurers, he says in a frail voice. You look like a group of worthy people capable of great things. Huh, he gets me. I have a job for you, if you so wish. Aha, perfect. Pay me. Let's find out what it is first. You see, I do not have many belongings. However, I did have one precious ruby. It was my granddaughter's last gift to me. But a man and his goons stole it. I would be ever so grateful if you brought it back. Certainly, sir. It would be an honor to help you. Who stole it from you and where can we find it? Savan Pinkor, an eccentric flamboyant orc with ties to the criminal underworld. He owns this part of the town's gentlemen's club. Gentlemen's club, say no more. It would be my honor to find your diamond and get a lap dance. It is a ruby, and it's in his office. He's currently away elsewhere, so this job shouldn't be much trouble for three tough heroes like you. Simply get inside, retrieve the ruby, and return it. What's in it for us, old man? I do not have much to offer, but I can pay you with some gold and information. Keep your gold. We'll get your ruby. I, Joey, solemnly swear to return the ruby to you, my friend. He lifts his head slightly and mutters a thank you before pointing to the club's location. The mysterious beggar then turns and walks away, leaving you to begin your quest. Oh my goodness, is this a friggin' strip club heist? My man, Ben, you've outdone yourself with this campaign. Bet you love the strip clubs, don't you, you horny dog? The doctor said I'll never be able to use my dick again. Like it was ever being used to begin with. Come on, Don. Not cool, Don. No, 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 I meant I love your dick, Benji. What the fuck, Paladon? Very cool, Paladon. Thank you, that means a lot, actually. Okay, so we all go to Savan Pinkor's Gentleman's Club. The three adventurers dive deeper into the underbelly of the town, a place for the outcasts, the damned, and the sinners. You see the club, but its entrance is guarded by a large knight. 
All right, let's come up with a plan, boys. Hmm. What would Elon do? That reminds me. What happened to your previous dungeon master? Unfortunately, Elon got into a severe car crash and developed cancer. Truly an unlucky day for him. Snowflake. Must be those electric cars just beaming with radiation. Totally. Uh, we approach the no, giant. No, barman, I'm the leader here. We approach the giant knight who becomes intimidated by my broad shoulders and raw masculine energy. The giant knight does not react to the three adventurers coming towards him. Oh, hello, pardon me, my lord. My compatriots Joey the Warlock and Obarman the Dark Elf. Why are you come. calling me a Dark Elf? Oh, dear. Oh, Lord. Oh, hamburgers. I rolled a bitch slap paladon. I rolled to take Ben's wheelchair. Oh, come on. Um, so the guard looks upon the disarray of your group and puts his hand towards his sheath's blade. Greetings, fine giant knight, sir. It is I, Joey, blessed by the divine holy mother maiden herself, student of the dark holy arts. We'd like to enter your fine establishment. The stoic guard takes his hand off the blade and stands there. I roll for a charisma check to persuade. A 14. Woohoo, snake eyes. No, you need two ones for that. Do you ever hear the universe screaming? The knight slowly gestures his arm towards the door, accepting your request to enter. Good job, Joey. I roll to see some hot wenches. Why don't you wait until we're in the club? I want them now. Uh, okay. Paladin rolls for a wisdom check to search for hot wenches outside the club. Woohoo, snake eyes. No, you need... You got a four. You find no wenches. You have no bitches. And the night looms over you. Idiot. Let's get inside. You go upstairs and find yourself in Savan's club. Purple fire dimly lights the room. You can see and smell the debauchery as patrons are fulfilling their cardinal lust. Upon the stage, you see muscular, beefy, scantily clad male orcs dancing around on poles. Muscular. Orcs? Are you fucking kidding me? Ah. Uh, okay. A gay orc bar. Uh, that's pretty unique. Do these orcs even have work permits? I'm lawful good, by the way. We're not doing that shit again, Paladonald. Yes. They all have work permits and are all legal citizens. Apart from the sad state of orc trafficking these guys succumb to in the harsh underworld of the sex industry. Don't care about that. I roll to find some sexy ladies. It's a gay bar. You're a gay bar. An orc, chiseled to the brim with several abs, approaches you. His white horns reflect the purple haze and his eyes glow red with passion. He flexes his hairy chest and offers you a lap dance. Listen, I'm not gay, but goddamn, that's an alpha-looking masculine specimen right there, just like me. Focus, Paladonald. Hmm. Okay, so one of us can take this lap dance and persuade the orc to tell us where the office is. Dibs not me. Dibs, Dibs not, me. not me. Oh, fuck off. No way in hell I'm doing it. Your time to shine, pal. Hell no. I thought you liked his chiseled body. Fuck you. Obarman should do it. He's used to doing this at home. How? Isn't Michelle a man? I attack Paladon. What the fuck? I attack Ben Shabibo. What the fuck? Who? Guys, please. I... My health. Let's focus. Okay, okay, fine. For Ben's sake. Come on, Paladonald. You have the highest charisma stat. No, 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 no. I don't want to show them my Paladong. I am loyal to Ivanka. You mean Melania? Who? There's no dong showing. Or even a lap dance. Just talking. Fuck's sake. I'll talk to him. My hero, my barbar for real. I roll to bribe the hunky orc with gold to get Savan's office location. Say it. But it's... Oh, Jesus. Woohoo, snake eyes. Obama rolls a 16. The orc winks at you before taking your gold coin and placing it in his packed loincloth. <laughs> he motions his head to the giant, unmissable sign that says office. Great. However, two beefy, menacing, sexy orcs guard each side of the door. Oh boy, now what? It's my time to shine, boys. The Divine Holy Mother gave me a vision about this earlier. It's a guaranteed success. I will cast a fire spell in secret, burning this curtain, forcing everyone to evacuate. And then we sneak in and out. Genius plan, Joey. It was my plan. Doing sneaky magic in a crowded place will be hard to achieve. Therefore, you roll with a disadvantage. Two dice, and the lowest decides your outcome. I roll to cast fire. You just got two ones. You're not gonna say it? Say what? Snake eyes! You got fucking snake eyes! What's that? I, uh, I'm not sure this is good for my health. Who? Right. So Joey unfortunately rolls a critical ultra failure. His magic explodes into his face and he slips on the curtain, falls back, and smashes through a window. The patrons and orcs and sultry onlookers gasp and turn towards the noise. The office guards leave their post and come to check the commotion. Perfect. Great job, Joey. As they are distracted, Paladonald and I sneak past everyone and enter the office. You get into Savan's office, filled to the brim with purple velvet. Even a blacklight wouldn't be enough to find all the stains in here. Gross. You see the ruby in a glass case in front of you. Hell yeah, I'll be taking that. No, you will not. I know you're not going to give it back to the old man. Oh, barman, you know me so well, buddy. Oberman swipes the ruby and conceals it. The duo walk out and see a crowd has gathered around the window, still distracted. I can hear the planet crying, Ben. You go outside and see Joey, who has been propped up by the giant knight. The knight begins to gently pat Joey's head. Thank you, giant kind sir. 
We should probably get out of here before they figure out what happened. Good idea. Let's go. The sneaky trio head out of the seedy part of town and... I'm so sorry, guys. It appears I am late for my physiotherapy. There might be a chance I can get feeling in my legs again. Oh, that's great, Ben. I must leave. But we can save this campaign for now and continue it next time. Sounds good, buddy. Great seeing you again. Take care, Benny, babe. There's the door, my friend. a nice guy yeah maybe i was wrong about him he's a cute rat i can't wait to continue this story oh yeah we didn't give the ruby back to the hobo it's okay we'll do it later on this week no i'm gonna do it now you can't play with ben gone he's worked hard on this campaign we'll continue next time he's here don't care cry more i will roll nothing you do right now will be canon in the dungeons and dragons president metaverse when we continue the story next time seethe mauled piss more jesus i roll to behead the hobo for fuck's sake A 20, critical success. I behead the hobo twice. You got a four. Whatever. I rolled to stab his dead body. I thought you were going to stop this and be lawful good. Renegade for life. Well, this was another great session with the lads. It really was. It's always fun with you guys around. (laughs) Hee hee. And now we get to go back to Barack's for some good food. Yeah, Michelle's cooking her famous ravioli. Oh, jolly gee, that's my favorite. I can't wait. Me too, boys. Me too. Let's a go. Guys, I'd like you to meet my friend, Kim. Such an honor to meet you. Thanks for making it here, Kim. How was your flight from North Korea? Does he speak English? He's just shy. What's going on, Joe? I'm a huge fan of you guys. Holy fuck. I'm blushing. Sorry, guys. I sometimes freeze when I'm nervous. How was your flight? was okay, but I'm still hungry. Congrats on the big Oscar win, by the way. No. What are you talking about, big boy? Didn't your family win for everything everywhere all at once? I rolled to use Malekith's death blade on Donald so he can shut the fuck up forever. Baby, those are different Asians who won. None were North Korean, or South Korean, or East Korean, or West Korean. I'm not racist. I see no color. What about orange? Well, you do be looking like a scrumptious, zesty citrus snack. Uh Uh-oh. I'd like to taste that forbidden citrus everywhere all at once. Well, uh... If you know what I mean. No, yo, uh, senpai. I'm Korean. So, hey, I'm surprised you're a fan of this tabletop game, Kim. Yeah, uh, I didn't know they had Dungeons and Dragons over there. We have lots of dungeons over there. It's great. What, uh... I see you ate all the food from over there, too. I think we'll get along just fine. Yeah, thanks. By the way, you gonna finish that? Finish what? That extra finger. It'd be looking real good. You're, you're a cannibal? My hunger is eternal. The consumption will never end. Uh, has the role-playing started? He's so fun and a big fan of Elden Ring. My favorite character is the Dung Eater. Of course it is. I relate to his hunger. Okay. I eat a lot. Yep. Don't you also like saying Dung Eater, Don? No, no, I don't. Not anymore. Mmm, Donnie, you looking like a juicy jawbreaker with a mysterious core. Uh Uh-huh. I want to lick. All right, relax. And after I'm done with him... I'll take a bite out of that smooth chocolate skin of yours. This is so fun. No. Don't make me hashtag me to your ass, Kim. I know Elon Musk. Relax. I will eat Twitter. Now introduce your succulent characters. Who are you? In the world of AI, we can be anyone we want to be. You mean in the world of Dungeons and Dragons? What's that? Hungry. Also, can we address the elephant in the room? We decided to start an Elden Ring D&D game, and you idiots went with demigods as your chosen characters. Why am I the only one to choose something normal and basic? Sounds like a personal problem. I mean, I thought a wizard would be cool. Was almost tempted to go for a samurai build, though. Samurai, huh? You like the Asian persuasion, big boy? I'm married. More food for me. All right, then. Well, I guess I'll start the introductions. I'm Wizarak, a truth seeker. I'm a mage, proficient in intelligence. Cute wizard build Barack, but now it's time for something interesting. I'm obviously the golden god, part of the golden lineage. Don't be alarmed, that's not a real lion beside me. It's my helmet. You can probably guess who my character is based on. Call me General Radonald. Very nice, Wizarak and Radonald. I am, of course, chieftain of the Goodlands. Joe Rabu, proficient in grappling, and I like animals. Cute puppies and lions, oh, huh? Interesting. I thought you'd want to be an omen like Mog. 
Why? So you can role play as a child kidnapper? You're a funny guy, Rod Donald. And I like that. It only makes me hungrier. Oh, uh, Stop. Okay. So can we start our adventure into the lands between? I want to venture into the lands between those cheeks, Dawn. P -p -p please stop. Yeah, enough. Leave my boy alone. Kim is just playing. He's a nice guy. All right, Erm. So how does this work? I usually end up eating everyone, so we never start the campaigns. Very cool. So Joe Ra, Radonald, and Wizarick make it to the lands between. Filled with wonders and worries. They see the overwhelming golden glimmering Erd tree in the far distance. So cool. If only I could be so grossly incandescent. Nearby, they come across vast golden fields, with some golden grace guiding them towards a minor air tree. Whoa, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. This is wonderful. Wow, what a surprise. You like the look of a miner. As the presidential tarnished trio trek through the fields, they come across a blue-skinned witch with four arms. And she says, Yo, what's up? It's me, Rena. But I am masking my true identity. Come on, Kim. I know you can make your voice more like hers. Fine. Hello, art thee tarnished thou here for glory and grace? I am Rena, and I have four arms which allow me to eat more food than no, ever. No, focus, Kim. Jesus. Okay, okay. Thou art meeting with Rena, but I am masking my true identity. My true identity is Ronnie, so call me Rena. Great writing, Kim. Okay. The freaky witch bitch tells you of a valiant defender amongst these fields. You must defeat it to figure out Rena's true identity. Sounds amazing, Kim. Let's go, guys. Great. Uh, so we need to go find this defender. Hmm, I guess I'll start by using my high intelligence to investigate. Right, right. And as you investigate, Joe Ra and I can look over there for a brothel or something. As Wizarak investigates, the Godskin duo look to find answers elsewhere. Godskin? Duo? Uh, he's calling you fat as fuck, Joe. I roll for an intelligence check. Fifteen. That's a success. You find hoofprints of a horse leading eastward. Wait, Kim, stop. Kim, take that D20 away from your mouth. So hungry. Okay, so we meet back up with Wizarak and follow the footprints. Yeah, yeah. And out of nowhere. Bam. The Tree Sentinel Defender shows up. As gold as a McNugget. And as fierce as the wings from Hot Ones. This will truly be a tough battle. Oh god, are you boys ready? Hell yeah. We got this. The Tree Sentinel's armor class is 50 and his Wait, strength is- Wait, ours is like less than five. We're level one. Oh no. The Tree Sentinel charges forward piercing his mighty spear straight into the heart and soul and tight hole of Joe Raw. He instantly dies. Ah! Oh my God, when- You killed Joey. You bastard. I roll to attack that tree fucker with all my might and magic. A 20, critical hit. You do one damage. Only 499 more hits to go. Oh, for fuck's sake. This is not good. My Joe, my boy. I miss him. I'm right here. What the fuck? How are you back? I just respawned at the grace site nearby. Oh. Oh. The tree sentinel eats his delicious horse and does some golden magic or something. You all die. Great. Fun. Woohoo. You all back? Yeah, good as new. Cool campaign, Kim. No. Maybe from soft games with their respawning and hard bosses aren't balanced enough to be in the DND &D format. Yeah. Or just take that mechanic out, Kim, and rebalance the bosses. I beat that boss first try. No, you didn't. Yes, I ate him. Great. I will nuke America one day, but all that greasy, greasy hamburger goodness you offer keeps distracting me. Okay. I like to eat. Oh yeah, I think we got that. Respawning is a unique aspect in D&D. Thanks, Kim. No problem, my sweet kitten, Joe. What would you want to respawn as if you died, Kim? You. Well, why? So I can feel you. Please, Godwin, help me. I roll to eat, Redonald. What the fuck? What is going on? The hunger. It's okay, he's joking. Nope, it's true. Think it's time to stop. Sorry, guys, I just got an important text. McDonald's just released a quadruple deluxe cancer burger. I gotta go. B bye. Bye, Kimmy. Enjoy the rest of your life, huh? There's the door, bitch. See you soon, pumpkins. Mission complete. What? You boys don't understand. This was all a covert operation to assassinate Kim Jong-un. I knew he couldn't resist a game of Elden Ring Dungeons and Dragons, so I befriended him and invited him here, knowing that he'll get into a car crash. Holy shit, you sick son of a bitch. My God, I love you. Damn, Joe, you're hardcore as fuck.
How did you know he'd get into a car crash? Did you set that up as well? No, it wasn't me. Still trying to figure out what's going on with that. Looks like America is safe from a North Korean nuclear threat, all thanks to you. My hero, my patriot, my Joe Obama. So North Korea is free for the taking? I suddenly heard they have some oil there. Then it looks like it's time to give them a taste of democracy. Woohoo! Can you turn that off? It's real annoying. Sorry about that. Well, thanks for coming, Ben. Can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Thought you might have stayed at the hospital to rest. Lazy! No worries. I just got really bored there and wanted to continue this Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I thought you found Allah. So isn't this fantasy world haram? Maybe that's why he's sending cars crashing into your spine. I'm not Muslim. I have no labels. Oh, thank God. Would hate to deport you mid-campaign. That's Islamophobic. No, no, no. I love the Muslims. For real on Allah. So what are you, Ben? I don't know. I found many things during this second coma. I found the beauty of God, Yahweh, Allah, and more beings. Even Buddha. You saw Buddha? The skinny one or the Donald one? Are you calling me fucking enlightened? Because I agree. I don't know. It's not really what I saw, but how I felt. You know there's no science behind God? No studies or facts? I care more about my feelings than facts right now. I see what you did there. Well, good luck on your spiritual journey, Ben. If you find the answers, let us know. Thank you. I guess coming close to death several times kind of changes one's perspective. God must really love you. Keeps trying to get you into heaven. Or it's not God, but something else. Kooky conspiracy Joe back at it again. Well, enough about me. I think it's time we continue our journey from where we left off. You undertook a strip club heist? Successfully nabbing the ruby from Savan Pinkor's office. Now it's time to meet the old beggar and return it. Sounds awesome, Ben. I'll be honest. I kind of missed you, Shabubert. The last dungeon master. Well... You won't have to worry about him ever again, Don. What happened? It's confidential. National security stuff. Right, right. I apologize. I forgive you, but I won't forget. Okay, so let's start with a quick reintroduction to your characters. Paladonald, the paladin. Obarman, the ranger. I am Joey, the cleric. I am proficient in healing. My highest stat is wisdom and my lowest stat is strength. And I'm ready. And I am not listening. Is Joey allowed to keep switching his classes? If he was allowed to switch classes, I'm sure he'd pick kindergarten. Stop. Um, typically no. The rules of D&D 5E don't have any retraining feature. But according to my notes, it appears I've allowed it in this campaign. Hmm, I don't remember writing some of this stuff down. Even with all the cars landing on your head, your memory is still better than Sleepy Joe's dementia. Great. Now it's time to continue our adventure. The trio of Obarman, Paladon, and Joey head out of the seedy part of Kinsville and away from the gay club. With the ruby in their possession, they go back to the old man. Are we really giving the ruby back? We made a vow. Come on, Paladon. Don't you want to live up to your Paladin oath? This might be my last day before they arrest me. I say we sell the ruby and go to a casino with blackjack and hookers. Aren't hookers what got you into this mess? Ugh. The old man appears out of nowhere and interrupts your conversation. I can already tell you found my ruby. Thank you so much, he says as he holds out his hands. No, no, no. Let's think about it. Paladon. Come on, man. I'm trying to be a better person. For Michelle. For my daughters. Oh, boo-hoo. With your estrogen, there's no coming back from the things we've done. I disagree. We can always redeem ourselves. Redeem these nuts in your mouth. I hand the ruby back to the old man. I behead the old man again. Again? No, I didn't play when you were gone. It's not true. The old man senses your hesitation and reaches into his pocket. It turns out he did have gold all along. It is a heavy pouch filled with 500 coins. This is for your troubles, he says. I knew it, you cheeky Jew Ben, holding out on me with the gold. That's anti-Semitic. No, 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 I'm not anti-Symmetrical. I love Gal Gadot and all hot Jews for real on Yahweh. Fuck's sake. Everything is going exactly as planned. You don't have to add in extra rewards, Ben. Don just needs to learn to shut the fuck up and behave. No, no, the gold was always part of the quest reward. See you, Barminch. This is why I'm the businessman. I always get us the best deals. I'm all about deals. And you look like you're all about meals, too. Shut the fuck up, Joe. Surprised you didn't sniff that old man's beard. Who? I exchange the ruby for the pouch of gold. And I take that pouch. I'll hold on to this, Obarman. Thank you so much, says the old man before he turns and limps away. 500 Jewish gold. It's not Jewish. Oh, boy, I wonder what we can buy. Golly gee, let's go see what snacks this town has to offer. I could do with a chocolate chocolate chip ice cream or maybe chocolate 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 chip with sprinkles and maybe a flake and even some vanilla sauce and chocolate chip. They and must have so many unique animal steaks in this world. Damn, 
You boys have got me all hungry. Let's go find ourselves the finest restaurant. Wonder if there's a Hooters. Okay, so the three adventurers, after completing their first quest, head towards the food district of the town, excited to spend that hard-earned gold. Until... 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 Holy golly, Magoo, what was that noise? I didn't hear anything. In the blink of an eye, a shadow covers you and disappears. You all look up to see... A black pegasus. This dark, majestic creature has never graced this side of the realm with its presence before. High up in the sky, it flaps its wings and gallops its feet in the air, getting further and further away. My goodness, wish I could take a picture, but cameras haven't been invented yet. Did you say it's never been seen here before, Benny? What the fuck? Imagine how much we could sell it for if we catch it, or how tasty its meat must be. You see a black creature, and the first thing you want to do is sell it? (gasps) If we had one of those, we could go anywhere. I roll to attack it. It's in the sky, Paladon. You cannot reach it. All right, relax. I roll to throw my sword at it like an epic javelin, killing it and capturing it. Idiot. You roll with two dice for the distance disadvantage. An 18 and a 2. Woohoo! Disadvantage means we go with the lowest number. Woohoo! That's 20 in total. Not how it works. You got a 2. Paladon launches his sword into the air, but the black pegasus was too high up. Now there's a sharp, deadly blade falling from the sky at a remarkable speed. Oh God, let's get in cover. I put my shield up. Wonder if they have cows in this realm. Otherwise, what milk is the ice cream going to be made of? Hmm. As you all brace yourselves for Paladon's sword, you see a group of five rugged, tough-looking bandits ten feet away from you. They're part of the Thieves' Guild and are too distracted watching the Pegasus fly away to notice the blade coming towards them. Oh, no. Oh, yes. The sword lands in the back of one of the unsuspecting bandits' heads, instantly killing him. Woohoo! Sorry, Obarman. My high score just keeps getting bigger. You are now engaged in combat. Combat with hobo bandits? When are we going to fight dragons and make out with the queen or whatever? Patience, Paladon. All good stories take time to develop. I'm not sure how much time Joe has left in this world, though. Gosh, I love it. Thinking about all the exciting things we'll discover in this story. Yes, in the coming years, I hope to introduce new factions, animals, races, monsters, even new bugs. Here's a cute bug fact. One day you will have to answer for your sins, and God may not be so merciful. Okay, guys, let's focus. There's no respawning in this world. We have to take every fight serious as any one of them could be our last. Wait, what? And this dumbass lost his sword. Wait, what? It's okay, guys. I use the legendary hero Lucky. The fuck does that even mean? Wait, this is someone else's memory. So I can go through the basics of combat with you guys. There's usually an initiative order based on dexterity. Go on. But since this is your first time, I'll give you the advantage of surprise. Come on, then. The unsuspecting bandits are startled and confused by a sword from the skies impaling their comrade. They are not fully ready for combat yet. I roll to roll away. No, let's listen to Ben first. Right. So we've got the initiative order. Obarman goes first due to his highest dexterity. Bullshit. You have many options for your actions now. Attacking depends on the enemy's armor class or AC. If your roll is greater than or equal to their AC, it's a hit. Then we roll again for how much damage. AC, roll again. My arms are going to get tired with all this rolling. Most exercise you've had in a while. Maybe try exercising your brain before the Parkinson's takes over completely. Focus, guys. Well, there's a lot to keep track of. Keep it simple, Benny. For Joey's sake, not mine. Okay, fine. Just roll once for your actions. And I'll keep track of all your stats and determine if it's a success or not. Perfect. So this will be our first serious fight. Don't mess about, guys. Paladon, since you have no sword, focus on using your shield to protect us. Don't tell me what to do, bitch. I'm Captain America. Oh, no. Please, no. I roll a 20 to throw my shield and bounce it off every bandit's head and get bitches. Um, okay. But Obarman was meant to go first due to initiative. Right. Okay, relax, Ben. Let them play how they want. Be a flexible dungeon master. Don't get angry. It's not good for your health. Remember the god voices? You know what, Ben? You really need to relax. Uh, you got a two. You throw your shield and a bandit catches it, increasing his defense by three. You're a special kind of dumb fuck, aren't you, Don? Oh, God, I'm swordless. I'm shieldless. And bitchless. We're also outnumbered. Four versus three. She yet. So what special moves do we all have? Hmm. Does anyone have any radiated toilet water? Maybe I can do my ultimate move? Wrong universe. I keep trying to call the Divine Mother's Holy Grace again, but she won't respond to my DMs anymore. And we can't respawn shit. We're gonna die. Please know I'm too young and handsome to die. Someone help. I call for help. Mommy? Your mom's dead. Skill issue. No, wait. Idiots. No one is going to die. They're just bandits. We've got this. I'm proficient in movement and archery, so I move away from the bandits to increase my longbow damage. Pussy. I use my archer's eye trade as a bonus action to further increase my damage. And then I roll to unleash a multi-attack with my bow. 
A 16? Excellent work, Obarman. These bandits are caught by surprise and aren't wearing any helmets. So your first arrow cleanly pierces one of their skulls, and the second arrow wounds another. Woohoo! Great work, Barbar. -bar. Now it's 3v3. We're gonna make it. Your turn now, Joey. You got this, Joey. Come on, old man. Damn it, did you really have to bring your hospital bed, Benny? Joe's getting sleepy just looking at it. I heal Obarman. Full health. Full health. He's at full health, Joey. What else can you do? I turn the undead. There are no zombies here. My divine domain is of life and love. Unfortunately, in this class and at my current level, I can't do much in terms of damage. It's okay, buddy. You're still my friend. However, I can channel my divinity of love to charm one of the bandits, getting them on our side. Whoa, oh, mama. Excellent choice, Joey. You rolled a charm using your domain, and it's a success. Now I roll a wisdom saving throw for the bandit. What the fuck? Whose side are you on? Um, no. It's just the rules to determine the success of the charm. I'm watching you, Bendu. You better not betray us. It fails. The charm is a success. I never doubted your loyalty, Bengal. Good job, Joey. We're unstoppable, aren't we? I tell the charm bandit to attack the others and get my friend's shield back. I roll for the bandit's attack, and it's a 12. He strikes one of his thieving partners holding the shield for one damage. Okay, now I roll to spit on the thieves. No. You've all had your turn. Now it's the bandits. Oh, boy. The charmed bandit will remain charmed until Joey's next turn. However, the other two thieving bandits watch you closely. With their agile mobility, they are able to move away from their charmed friend to avoid an opportunity attack. So many words. Is it my turn yet? One thief rolls to attack Paladon with a throwing knife, and it's a success. Ah, uh, my leg. It hits your arm for two HP. Don't worry, I'll use everything I have to heal you on my turn, Paladon. Stop right there! You hear someone shouting from afar. Oh no, not more trouble. The town's guards approach you, holding their shields and spears, ready to attack. Finally some help. Hello, guards. These Mexican thieves are thieving and breaking the law or something. Nope. The other thief rolls to throw the shield at Paladon to distract, then uses his abilities, fast hands, and thief reflexes. Leave me alone. Advantage roll due to distracting Paladon, and it's a success. The thief steals the gold pouch Paladon is holding, and they disengage and flee from combat. Bullshit! What the absolute bullshit fuckery is this? For fuck's sake. No, my ice cream money. As the town's guard approaches you from the front, you hear some heavy footsteps from behind. Well, at least we survived the combat. Good job, guys. Ball sacks, all our hard-earned gold. I kept telling you guys about building walls, but no one listens. No one ever listens. I said, you hear some heavy footsteps from behind. Oh, right. You all turn around and see... My gosh, it's my friend. The large knight who was standing outside the gay orc club. Turns out he wasn't its bouncer. He looks down at you and is ready to unsheathe his blade. He's on our side, right? I want to hug him. You're under arrest, says the town's guard. Seems like the king wants to punish you personally for crimes against the kingdom. What the fuck? No, 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 there has to be a mistake. I roll to persuade the guards that we're innocent. A four? You fail to persuade? And they punch Paladon in the stomach. Why me? The guard nods to the large knight behind you. It seems they're all working together. The rest of the guards surround you and place you under arrest, covering your heads with sacks so you can't see. Bullshit, I've had enough arrests for one lifetime, Shabibo. Plus, look at my skin, got no melanin. Why would they fucking arrest me? I'm sorry, guys. My sister just messaged me. She wants me to go help her even though I'm in a hospital bed. Still, I can't say no to her. I wouldn't be able to say no to her either. My goodness, is she well endowed. I agree. I like it. Plus, your daughter is very sexy, too. I agree. I like it. Jesus, this is not how I wanted you two to bond. Well, thanks again for another fun D&D session, Ben. Yeah, so much better than Kim. Take care, Ben. Thank you, guys. See you later this week. And Ben, stay safe. Watch out for any cars. Will do. It seems we can't change destiny. What? Oh yeah, you guys can't hear what I can. Yeah, we're not old enough to be deaf like you yet. I can't wait for the next session. I wonder what the king will do to us. I will take his throne. I really wish we could have got some ice cream. Well, bro, we're all free, right? How about we all go get some right now? Hell yeah, boys, I'm ready. Oh golly, Pip, it's time for some Choco Choco Chip. Wake up. I wasn't sleeping. Hey, you. Finally awake. You weren't trying to cross the border, right? What? To escape for your crimes. Objection. Border? Just to catch you up, Joey, since you were sleeping. We were arrested and then... I know. I didn't miss anything. Uh, 
I've been here before. Soon the king will reveal what we must do. Wait, how do you know that? This is my unique campaign. So you couldn't have played it before. I know, I know, golly gosh. I just know we're in Castle Regalia, in the capital city, located in the heart of the Regalian kingdom, home to mostly humans. Uh, how come you know so much about the lore of everything, Joey? Isn't it obvious? He's so old that he was around when it all actually happened. I've lived many lives. That role play doesn't fit your character. Anyways, can you all shut up? I want to see the sexy queen. Where is that babe hiding? First, let's see what the king has to say. Whoa. Look at that glorious beard. I, King Ragus, first of my name, have brought you here into my esteemed Yawn. presence. Bitch act properly. I am. I'm lawful good. That makes no sense. Is this how you act when meeting leaders? Yes, any time I've met another country's president, they would always submit to my alpha masculinity. Just shut the hell up and role play. I'm in pain. King Ragus, we didn't mean any disrespect. I see. You all must be outsiders. Just like him. Who? The bringer of doom and destruction. No, I meant who asked? Goodness. No one has dared to ever speak up to me like this before. Come on, Paladin. Focus, dumbass. Fine, whatever. No, it's okay. I can handle it. You can't even handle walking. I will only ask this once, so answer with caution and reverence. State thy names and who you serve. I am Joey, a cleric, faithful servant to the divine holy goddess of harmony. I am Obarman, an elf ranger, and I serve the realm and justice for all. I am Paladonald, the paladin, and I serve the gods of tits and wine. I see. I see. Your names all but confirm you are foreign. How dare you! But now, my children, give me one good reason why I shouldn't have your heads. I ask to know what our crimes are. I ask to see my lawyer. I ask to stroke that glorious beard. Silence! Enough foolery! Silence, huh? Really? I'm American, and I have a right to remain not silent. Nope. Besides, what is a king to a golden god? And what is a golden god to a non-believer? Help! All right, he got you there, so shut the fuck up. The king begins to chuckle. How about this? Only one of you will be leaving here alive. It will be a trial by combat. The winner of this fight walks free. The losers. Well, they'll never walk again. Ah, uh, just like Shabibo. I refuse this offer and I denounce this trial. I also refuse to fight my friends. Oh yeah, me too. Unless... Paladon. I'm joking. Unless... You there, the fat one. Who's he talking to? Paladonald. Are you willing to kill your friends for sanctuary? For glory? For tits? For wine? Depends if they're queen-sized. The king, amused by your candidness, begins to chuckle and clap. We are under dark times, my friends. So it's been a while since I've laughed. And as I expected, you're loyal to each other, and you're not despicable sycophants in the face of royalty. Mentioning the word sycophants seems to have soured the king's mood. Sick of what? Explain that word for Joey. Ass kissers. Bootlickers. Thank you, from Joey. Well, pardon the brash introductions. I just had to know for sure, if you must know. You're not here to be charged for any crimes. Although perhaps you are slightly guilty of crime by association. Who did we associate with? Well, my spies tell me you were last seen with an old man. A man who stole our kingdom's most prized possession. Yeah, we were only seen with him. We didn't steal the ruby from a gay orc club for him or anything like that. What? Call me king. Fret not. For thou aren't the only people who have been manipulated and deceived by this man. Who is this man anyway? The king takes a deep breath and wipes his brow. You might want to settle in, boys. We're about to learn a lot. Oh boy, I'm ready. He... He has many names, many faces. In my kingdom, he was supposedly a friend and our lovable jester. He looks trustworthy. Beloved by all, he could make anyone laugh. He'd say all the right things. A smooth talker, silver tongue, a sycophant who worked his way up the political ladder. No one ever doubted him. Why would they? He'd always make us smile, laugh, and say all the right things. However, beneath all that was a master of deceit a monster unlike any we could have imagined. It turns out he is a shapeshifter whose full intentions still remain unclear. We don't even know what his true form even is. But the seers, the scholar, the ancient tomes, all the prophecies, they confirm he is the harbinger of doom, bringer of calamity, conductor of the riftium, and they call him Kalos. Even now I find it hard to believe, but when our celestial ruby was stolen, and with all the omens, the black pegasus, it's all, it's all coming true. The king closes his eyes. A man deeply haunted with regret. Fucking told you we should have beheaded that hobo. That old man was callous. I have so many questions. It seems the king is feeling despondent. It might be difficult to get all the answers you need. No problem, Benghazi. My charisma stat is high. I roll to ask him the question that's on all our minds. Very well. Where is the sexy queen? God damn it. Um... Okay, you got a four. 
Ouch. It sometimes hurts for me to speak. You got a four. It doesn't look like the king heard you or he's choosing to ignore your silly question. SMH, shake my head. So he mentioned a lot. Uh, a jester betrayed him. Shapeshifter. Stole the ruby. Then he shapeshifted into an old man. Don't let him hear this. But why was that important ruby on display in a gay orc club? I don't know. Something really weird is going on. Maybe he planned for us to get executed by the king just for fun? The king also mentioned conductor of the riftium. I will do a persuasion roll to understand what that is. 15. A success. You asked the king for more details of the oncoming doom and the riftium. Ah, yes. Thou art ignorant of our customs and dogma. Perhaps I should start with a brief history lesson? Yes, please. History? Well, I guess Joey is going Oh, golly gee. This reminds me of my time back in 2036 where Mrs. Pepperscotch would chase us around during history class with her peg legs. She could never catch us. Okay. Very well. We are the realm of four grand kingdoms. Regalia in the center, Christonia in the south, Arzonia in the west, and Trexina in the east. Though each kingdom has its very own dominant race, culture, and customs, we are all united by the divine and the celestials. Oh boy, here we go. Long, long ago... From the heavens themselves, this world was showered with celestial power in the form of gems. These gems were the source of all life and harmony, but also the cause of destruction and chaos. To bring balance to the realm, a keeper from each kingdom was bestowed with their very own celestial gem, to be used only for the greater good and prosperity of their people. Each generation, new keepers are chosen, and the responsibility of guarding the gems are passed down. The aquatic Arzonians guard the sapphire. The mountainous Christonians guard the diamond. The forest-dwelling Trexans guard the emerald. And Regalian humans were chosen to guard the ruby. We have had 50 prosperous years of peace and harmony after ending the Goliath Wars. This war seemed hopeless at one point, but all four kingdoms came together. All four keepers banded as one, combining our celestial gems into a beacon of carnage to thwart our enemies. We fought, we bled, and we triumphed together. All I'm hearing is this bitch king lost the ruby and decides to arrest us for it. Coward. I rolled to overthrow the king bitch and steal his queen. How about no? Keep listening. These gems hold unseen and untold powers. We have still barely scratched the surface of what they're capable of. And it appears Kalos understands this as well. He is an ancient evil which the prophecies declare will bring upon the Riftium. A calamity of instant and utter destruction. A rift to swallow worlds across plains. And he plans to do that with the celestial gems. He stole our ruby after years of planning and manipulating. And one gem is powerful on its own. But if we can perhaps gather the other three together, we could easily defeat him and stop this before it's too late. Man, this is a lot of info dumping Ben showed. How do you expect me, I mean Joey, to remember it? You're not expected to remember it. It will all be expanded on throughout the story. I'm just laying the foundation. Well, I like it. So where are we, by the way? Castle Regalia. But why? Anyhow, my fear is that Kalos is now marching towards the other kingdoms, leaving behind a trail of blood to collect the gems and fulfill the prophecy. So why not do something to stop him? We are. We have sent militias, troops, mercenaries, and more across the realm. We've set up a bounty hunt and even sent out ravens to alert the other keepers. But even with all that, it may not be enough. Which is why I am resorting to commanding local adventurers and heroes to join the fight as well. I understand, my lord, my royal king. It is my belief that any one extra hero could be what we need to tip the scales in our favor. And as I said before, my spies saw your contact with Kalos. And yet you're still alive. That is a luxury not afforded by many. Cool. So guys, I guess it's us versus Kalos. But wait, I want to know more. What about the Black Pegasus? Can we fly it, my dear sweet king? Black Pegasus. There has been no tales of anyone flying on them. They are merely an omen. A sign that we must act with haste. They have not been sighted for centuries. But the prophecy dictates that calamity follows the marching of the winged horses. What other omens are there? Well, apart from the Black Pegasus, we also have heard rumors of a black fog emerging from the ocean in the east and a black behemoth hold rumbling. Hold up, hold up. Here we go. Why does it have to be only black things that are considered bad omens, huh? Oh, um, I... You dumb motherfuckers. I don't like pulling the race card. Snowflake! But why are bad omens bad things? Always labeled as dark or black in fantasy stories? Oh, a black pegasus must be a bad sign. A black dragon. Yeah, he's automatically evil. Oh, but look at Joey. He's a white cleric with white magic, and that's all good and holy. But wait, black magic. Yeah, black magic is pure evil. Like no wonder fucking racism exists when it's being reinforced so subtly in our language of 
You dumb motherfuckers been gaslighting us all into believing white is good and black is bad. God fucking damn. Yeah, but Lord of the Rings has a black elf now, so racism is over. Shut the fuck up. I didn't mean anything by it, Obarman. I was just following tropes for story purposes. I know, I know. Whatever. Shake my head, SMH. The king lifts his head up, confused. No, no. You don't have to role play your way out of this. It's fine. What is this racism you speak of? Why would anyone be racist towards you? You're simply an elf. Skin color? We have a variety of those in regalia. What is this bullshit, Bebo? Don't cave into those leftist cowards. I want racism in my fantasy stories, and I want it now. The only kind I don't like, the only race I despise, are Goliaths. Thank you. Understandable, the war wasn't too long ago, and I imagine people's perceptions can take... And I despise dwarves. For fuck's sake. Now we're talking. You see, Goliaths and dwarves share the same blood. Someone tell me how that makes any sense. My lord, my mighty king, I understand all too well of the hatred one feels towards dwarves. How so? Well, the, I always feel compelled to behead their stupid little heads. Okay. Um, great. The king is happy to bond with Peladonald over their dwarven racism. He begins to feel more at ease and trust you guys. This is so fun. Yeah, but as fun as this is, we're going to be late for dinner at Joe's. Can you tell this king to hurry up and give us our quest? Right, right. So the king tells you of the four kingdoms. The four gems. The ruby has been stolen by Callus, the mysterious shapeshifter who wants to bring about the Riftium. Now it is up to you to travel across the realm and retrieve the other gems before Callus and defeat him to save the world. Man, oh man, oh mama, Benny, you have outdone yourself with this. I'll give you that. Yeah, even though your arms don't work or your legs or your spine or neck or dick, it's good to know your brain is still going strong. I'm glad you're still alive, Ben, for now at least. What, what do you mean, Joey? Call me Ben. No, no, I don't think I will. <laughs> so if you adventurers want glory and the crime of being associated with that old man to go away, I suggest you accept this quest and go forth and save the world. I accept the quest. I, Joey, accept this grand undertaking and swear to end Kalos' reign of terror and bring peace to the realm. Nah, but for real, where's the sexy queen at? So you have three options on your next destination. You can begin your journey by traveling to Mount Cristo to meet the Cristonians for the diamond or travel to Lake Ephitra to meet the Arzonians for the Sapphire, or travel to Imor Forest to meet the Trexans for the Emerald. Wait, wait, show the different races again. Gross. Gross. Okay, I see some potential there. Let's go to the Water Kingdom. Sounds good to me. I'll show those ladies what it means to be wet. Maybe start with your wife. She's still waiting. Shut the fuck up, Joe Rectile Dysfunction Biden. Relax, guys. We just got our main quest sorted. We're traveling to Lake Ephitra for the Sapphire. Woohoo! Hell yeah, we're going to Arizona. Arzonia. Whatever. Mm. Aren't you excited, Joey? I am excited, but I have a really bad feeling about Kalos. He's a fucking clown. We can take him. Hmm, maybe you're right. He's a silly, charming clown who moved his way up into political power when he shouldn't have. Wait. I didn't know Don was in this game. Did you just call me fucking charming? Because I agree. But still, Kalos is out there. Plotting who knows what. It's okay, Joey. How about we ask the king? How likely is it that we can win? Well, my boy, I don't want to give false hope. But the reason I'm not in complete despair despite the omens is that I remember reading the legends. Stories of a band of heroes who have stopped minor riftiums in the past. Who's to say it can't happen again? However, even so, you must heed my advice. Stay as far away from Kalos as possible as we do not need more pointless casualties. He is a master manipulator and a prime force of chaos. Only after obtaining more celestial gems should you confront him. See, Joey? We get some gems and then we win. Nothing to worry about, buddy. So cheer up. Copium, hopium. Hope is all we need. Hope is what keeps us alive when all we feel is pain. Hope is the light in the darkness. Hope, hope is all I have. You okay, Ben? We've kind of just been focused on your epic campaign. But how have you been? Well, honestly, I don't know. I'm confused. My first two comas felt strangely blissful despite all the pain I was in. I felt the embrace of a higher power or something. But after being shot and placed in a third coma, I, well, I didn't see or feel any higher power this time. All I can feel is the pain in my body. I rolled a heel Ben's broken glass puny bones. Um, that's really sweet, but not how it works. We'll see. No, this is a tabletop game. So anyways. I rolled a push Ben off his bed. Okay, enough. You should just push me off and put me out of my misery once and for all. Whoa. What the fuck, Ben? It's going to be okay, Ben. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. No worries. I'm fine. Not like I've been trying to be a better person. Trying to get closer to God. And look at me. 
this is what God does to me. I'm a fucking broken, useless man. Hey, hey, hey. You're not useless at all. In fact, you're more able and capable than most. Yeah, even without a working spine and dick, you're still the best dungeon master. And I love how you make your voice deeper for the king. Whatever. Sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I shouldn't have yelled. No, it's understandable, my bro. I'm better than this. My faith is just being tested is all. Right. Sure. Anyways, where were we? I'm here. I'm here for you. Yeah, if you ever need a friend, talk to Joe and Obama. Okay. And me. Enough of this pity party. We're here to adventure. My spirit is strong and I have a lot of willpower. And a lot of willpower. Hell yeah. So the three adventurers accept their quest and proceed to the Arzonian kingdom. But before they leave the king's throne room, they hear a woman's voice. Is it? Could it be? My queen? The queen enters to bid her new champions farewell. What the fuck is that? Before you leave, won't you speak some fine words of love and adoration to my wonderful queen? Wow, that's... Yeah, she's definitely one of the queens I've ever seen. Yeah, I agree. She's definitely one of the queens ever. The queen is confused but accepts the compliments. She bows and waves you off. Why the fuck is Rosie O'Donnell in my fantasy game? Well, Ben, this has been an absolute blast. Thank you, bro. Yeah, overall, great stuff apart from the fatty. Shame we have to go. It's okay, guys. I had a lot of fun. It's always fun with you. I... Yeah. Man, I'm so hungry. Me too, buddy. All right, bros. You know what time it is. Yeah, as much as I'd love to continue, we can't keep Jill waiting. Very true. She hates it when we're late. Especially when she's cooking her special roast dinner. Oh boy, oh, I can't wait. Hope she's made those roasted sweet potatoes again. I love her my sweet God. potatoes. For real, I need to get the recipe for my Mexican cook. Have fun, guys. I gotta go. Um, I'll see you guys in a few days. Ben. Why don't you come as well, if you're not busy? What? Come on, buddy, it'll be fun. Yeah, Benny, you better join us. Thanks, but what, why? What do you mean, why? Look at me. I look like a deformed monster. I shouldn't be around families or ruin people's dinner. I'm just a random loser and you three are fucking presidents. Shut up, Ben, you're our friend. And there's nothing wrong with you or how you look, so come. Yeah, with us, you'll be safer too. Secret service protection and all. You'll always have a seat at our dinner table. Guys, I, I don't, I don't know what to say. But, thank you. I still can't find him. What? You're looking a lot better, Benny. And I feel a lot better as well. Bet it was Jill's cooking, am I right, Joey? I won't let you die. Are we there yet? We just got on the cart. Where am I? Let me recap for you. The three adventurers, Obarmin the Ranger, Paladon the Paladin, and Joey the Cleric, met the king of the Regalian Kingdom. He has given you the quest to travel across the realm of four kingdoms, retrieve the celestial gems, and stop Kalos the Shapeshifter from starting the Riftium, in short, you must save the world. Easy. No pressure. And I do have to remind you, you've now used your last gold coin to hire this carriage. Classic Jew, keeping tabs on the gold. Stop. We would have 500 gold coins if you didn't lose the pouch. I didn't lose the pouch of gold. Those Mexican Muslim thieves stole it. They were white men. You sure? Because statistically, they're more likely to- Shut the to... fuck up. They also stole my sword. No, it landed on someone's head after you threw it. And then you forgot to pick it up. Fake news! I'm just glad we survived meeting Kalos the shapeshifter. We survived, and now Lake Ephitra awaits. Golly, I can't wait to meet the Arzonians. They're such a sweet bunch of people. Are we there yet? How long is it? It will take a day, which gives you adventurers ample time to do some long rests and recover your HP to full. Can we trust the horse rider? What if Kalos shapeshifted into him? What if Kalos is the horse? Jesus. What if Kalos is Jesus? Shut up. Hmm. You're acting kind of sus, O'Barman. Are you sure you're not Kalos? Let me look at that birth certificate again. We should vote on who's the imposter and kick them off the carriage. We are not playing among us in this D&D campaign. You do realize what you've done, Shabuber? Having a shapeshifter villain means I can't trust anyone. It's like you want me to behead people. And you are not using the shapeshifter mechanic as an excuse to go full turbo murder hobo. If only you chumps listened to me from the start. I wanted to keep the ruby. I wanted to behead the hobo. I was right all along. Fuck's sake. You didn't know he was Kalos. And we don't take chances on killing innocents. Pussy. We are not trading lives, okay? We won't sacrifice or behead innocents to save the world. 
That's not the person I want to be. Don't say it. For my family. The cringe is too strong. I like it. Yeah, come on, guys. A little beheading never hurt anyone. Shake my head. Your lawful good. Stop acting like you're ISIS. True, yeah, you're the only Muslim here. Nope. And Ben? Nope. Ramadan Mubarak. Rama what? Hey, Mubarak Obama? Of course you don't know about the month of fasting, you fat fuck. I swear to God and Allah, if you insult me again, I'm going home. Okay, relax, fellas. How do we know Joey's not the imposter? Maybe his dementia made him forget he's Kalos. And how do we know you are not Kalos? Have you seen me, you idiot? No one could shapeshift into a golden god like me. No one could shift into my shape. I feel like round is a very easy shape to shift into. Shut the fuck up! How can we even trust you? Last year, you told us you were 75. This year, you say 76. So which is it? Exactly. I'm voting Paladin out. I'm voting Ben out. What? That's fucking enough. Enough paranoia. You boys better stop or I'm turning this carriage around. Sorry, Barbar. Whatever. Okay. So, as the adventurers continue their travels, they look out the carriage and see a glimpse of the beauties and wonders this realm has to offer. Whoa. Wow. Wow, rocks. So cool. As more time passes, the adventurers see Can many. Can we be called something else instead of adventurers? Like the dynamic trumpets? Or the trumpers? Uh... Paladon does make a good point. I think it's about time we came up with a name for our group. Oh boy, now's my time to shine. I think something like trumpers would work. Such a good name, amazing name. Probably the best name. Here come the gang of trumpers. How about the presidential adventurers? Wow, so clever, O'Barman. You definitely went to Harvard Law School to come up with something so creative. But you think trumpers is good? You said it, not me. What about heroic presidents? Boring. How about Trumpo? It's a combination of all our names together. It has my name and you both have O's in your name. Trumpo. How about Dungeons and Presidents? How about Ivanka Fan Club? How about American Dragons? How about Ion? What about American Dungeons? We already have that. It's called Guantanamo Bay. I want to go a more fantastical route. Something Latin. No one knows any Latin here? I do. I learned it back in 1347. Uh, my teacher was called Yao Ling, and she'd teach me the ways of the warrior. I was so good with a mop and sponge after. Best cleaner in the class. A Latin name makes it sound special and exotic. I hate both those things. What do you suggest, Joey? Well, we're all united by one thing. Friendship. And the word for friend in Latin is amica, which kind of sounds like America. Since we're all friends and we're all presidents, we should be called... Pres Amica. I hate it. Amica sounds like how a Mexican would say America. I like it. Pres Amica. It rolls off the tongue. Two simple words, meaning president friends. Not bad. Sucks to be you, though, Ben. You're not even president. Not yet. Even Ben's car crashes hurt less than hearing that name. Who? We'll have plenty of time to think about it, so no rush. What other Latin words are there? I know them all. What's the Latin word for wheelchair? Stop. Fine. What is the Latin word for absolute badass golden god supreme? Obesus. I am obesus. I am such an obesus. I am the most obesus (laughs) of all. Right, so the three adventurers continue their road trip towards the Arzonian kingdom. They suddenly hear an inhuman sound and rush to look out their carriages. Are those fucking winged cows? Oh my God, so cute. So cool. Didn't know Joe's mom was in this game. Come on. Wonder how their milk tastes. Oh boy, probably like some sweet strawberry vanilla caramel tangy milkshake. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just licking my lips thinking about it. Wonder how their wings taste. Well, obviously the same as buffalo wings. With a lot of time left on their travels, the trio decide to finally take a long rest and fully recover their HP. Then what? Several hours pass by, and then... Oh my God, what is that noise? You all wake up from the middle of your rest and look out to see... Holy moly. Joe Mama! It is a golem! How are we supposed to fight that? I don't even have a sword. Fear not. We're too far away from it. You can see some monster hunters have already shown up to fight. Did you add in that golem because you're Jewish? I love Judaism, but I am not Jewish. I'm still figuring it out. Did you know that in Jewish folklore, the Jewish mystics would create golems to get closer to God? Wow, Ben, real subtle. I don't think God will fix your legs just because you made some fantasy golems. Jew golems? Wait, are they called Jewlems? By the way, are you still a Jewish Muslim? A Jewslem? No, no, and no. I watched 21 Jump Street last night, so I'm really into Jews again. Okay. Anyways, with the golem too far and preoccupied by other warriors... The carriage continues its journey. How far are we? We're mid-journey. <laughs> Halfway there? All right. 
As more time passes, we... Can you hurry this up? My wife's cooking steamed hams for us. Melania learned how to cook. Yeah, she's got this new recipe called steamed hams. Best burgers ever. My God, tastes just like McDonald's. Oh boy, I like the sound of those. Okay, okay. So the carriage traverses past more biomes and terrain. Ooh. Ooh. More rocks. You then come across an excavation of sorts. What the hell? Wow, we woo. Okay, that's cool. We can see some explorers, or perhaps looters, around a dig site of a gigantic skeleton. Would that be a remnant from the Goliath Wars? The origin of the creature are unknown. It is hard to say who or what it is. Ooh, I love mysteries. Tell me now. I guess the bones of all the slain Goliaths would have decomposed after 50 years. So this is something that was killed more recently. Good point, Barb. Delicious winged cows, Jew golems, and now giant mysterious skeletons. Damn, I am into this shabibo. Yeah, you keep outdoing yourself, bud. Thank you, guys. I'm really enjoying making this world. Would be a shame if it was all destroyed. I think it's time for another long rest to fast travel to our destination. Sleepy Joe is so happy to hear that. Great. More rest for Prez Amica. Don't use that name. So, Prez Amica, I mean the trio, take another long rest. A lonesome clock tower rings in the distance, waking you all up. Cute. Oh, I see water. Surely that means we're getting real close. Yep. As the carriage leaves the clock tower far behind in the distance, more hours pass until... What's that? You begin to hear what sounds like rainfall, but upon closer inspection, you realize... This is just, wow, amazing. Beautiful, beautiful world. I need to go swimming. Waterfalls, but not from the sky. The Arzonian kingdom awaits the group of Prez Amica. Such a pleasant journey with you all here with me, this world. Everything is so gorgeous. I know, right, buddy? Just a good old chill road trip with the lads. Man, oh man. Yeah, this is what life's all about, isn't it? And I hope Prez Amica... Wait, fuck. I knew you liked the name. Nope. Why? Trumpers. Prez Amica. I hate it. You're the one who comes up with that name in the future. I love it. Prez Amica all the way, baby. Well, I guess we're sticking with that group name. Prez Amica. Prez Amica. Prez Amica. Prez Amica. Hmm. 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 I love it. Wonder what the people will think. What people... Oh, you mean the other kingdoms? Or the voices in his head. Take your pills, Joey. With the road trip coming to an end, Prez Amica will now be entering the Arzonian kingdom to retrieve the celestial sapphire. Another good sesh with my three bros. It was real fun, guys. Hope we get more cute road trips in the future. Don't want it to end, but the steamed hams are waiting for us, boys. It's okay. We'll get plenty more road trips in the future. I hope so. I promise you, my friends. Uh, such a wholesome day. I bet every sesh is going to feel this good. Yeah, it will. Now let's go, boys. No, 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 no. This can't be. Why did it all change? Why are they dead? Why? Obamarmin, Paladon. this really existed. This looks remarkable, Ben. I would love to visit with my daughter. The presidential adventurers have arrived into the water kingdom of Arzonia. Obarman the ranger, Paladon the paladin, and Joey the cleric are here to retrieve the celestial sapphire to help them save the world. Gosh, look at how pretty it all is. Yeah, this kingdom is beautiful. I was talking about you. Hello. What he means is that you're looking a lot better. Glad the treatments are working for you. Thank you. Even the doctors were surprised at my speedy recovery. They said my spirit is unyielding. I can't give myself all the credit. I know what really happened. Do you? I know the truth. Have you figured out what's going on as well? Uh, yes. The truth is that it is the grace and holy mercy of a higher power. Oh, okay. Well, we're all really glad you're all right, Ben. What about your legs? Is the physiotherapy working or can I still call you wheels? No. I still can't whoa, feel them whoa. and- Whoa, you're leaking. Sorry. Yeah, it sometimes happens. But anyway, let's get on with the adventure, shall we? Let's go, boys. The Arzonian Kingdom. Our heroes find themselves in the midst of the giant lake after a long journey. They see the bolsterous Arzonians relishing in their natural habitat. Oh. Gross. They, of course, enjoy swimming, diving, jumping off waterfalls, and relaxing in the warm waters. Hot body, but she might need a paper bag. That's a man. What the fuck? I'm leaving. Yeah, we can't show female nips without censorship, so we'll call those ones men. Um, okay. So as you walk along the bridge, you hear some bubbling in the water and see... Oh, God. Oh, so cute. Gross. 
Kill it with fire. And further along, you hear some giggling. Oh, so cute. Oh, God, keep Joey away. Arzonians of all shapes, sizes, and ages enjoy their communal swims. Much like humans, the Arzonians have different races and cultures amongst them. But they are all united under their king and several matriarchs. So cool. We should all definitely go swimming after this sesh. Oh, golly, I'm so down. I love water parks and playing with the floaties, huh? Do you float Benny or do you sink? They actually have some nice accessibility options at the local water park. Special wheelchairs so I can get in the water, too. Didn't ask. Now, where is the Arzonian king's castle? Maybe we should ask around. Okay, so I take charge as usual and lead my fellow Press Amicans to find the castle. Speaking of Press Amica, I was talking to my wife, who's a doctor, by the way, and I've got some bad news about your group name. What is it? Well, in Latin, Amica is the female version. Amico is the masculine version. Amico? Amigo? Are you fucking kidding me? I told you it was Mexican. No, no. Amico is singular male. Amici is plural male. And Amica is singular female. Single female, plural male. Are you fucking stupid, Ben? What? Oh, no? Why the fuck are you so obsessed with pronouns? Now you're telling me words have gender pronouns too? Are you an actual liberal psycho? Relax, don't, don't stress him out or he'll... Oh, yep. I... No, that's not what I said. There's also Amicum and Amic... Amicum... Am I cum? Uh, am I fucking cum? Jesus Christ, Shabibo. It's fine. Relax, guys. We're sticking with Preza Amica. Now let's do the quest. We are not Americans or Americans. We are Americans. Exactly. I am a real Preza Amican. I fight for the rights of every man. Ben, are you an army can or an army can't? Okay, okay, okay. I get it. Prez Amica all the way. That's my guy. Now where were we? We're trying to find the castle. Right. So you make your way around the kingdom until a very peculiar Arzonian catches your eye. What the? I want to hug him. You may not like it, but this is what peak male performance looks like. But have you seen Mike O'Hearn's body? Now that's a man. Nope, I'm not a gay. Then why do you have that haircut? Shut the fuck up, Obama. Tell him to stop. Come on, fellas. Focus on the big boy. Greetings. We're getting a lot of your kind today, aren't we? Our kind? Yes. Lots of adventurers from Regalia are visiting us. All after the same thing, I suppose. And what is that? The Celestial Sapphire, of course. Right, right. King Ragus did say he sent out a lot of other groups, too. Bullshit! We have to hurry then before they steal all our glory and bitches. Oh, wise chubby Arzonian. Could you point us into the direction of your king's humble castle so we may confer with him? Why, yes. I can do that. But first, could you help me with but a simple task? I need help finding my friend. He should be right around here. We don't have time for this fat ass. I thought you said he's peak male. You're hearing things again. Hmm. Okay, I ask him to describe his friend for us. He is but a cute blue frog. The sweetest boy. He should be right around here amongst these rocks. What's the point of this, Benjo? Right, so, I want to immerse you guys further into the world and have you start using more of your class skills and ideas to solve different quests. We've done a lot of talking in our sessions, but not a lot of questing. Okay, so let's check out our skills and see what ideas we can come up with. I can use my healing to help his mental state. He seems fine to me, Joey. I can scoop some water with my shield to splash him. But why? You all have character sheets and class-specific skills and spells. Okay, let me read. Oak, I can heal. Wait, what the fuck? Guys, I have the perfect ranger spell. Yep, this is what I wanted. I have a divination called Locate Animals or Plants. Very good. Okay, so uh, I'm going to cast the spell. You don't need to roll for these types of spells. Uh, I see. Thanks, Ben. I'm learning a lot. Dumbass. Of course you don't roll. Anyways, I use my Locate Frog spell first. No, Paladon, your class doesn't have that spell. What the fuck? What do I have then? Have you looked at your character sheet? Too long. Didn't read. Great. So Obarman gets out some bloodhound fur from his satchel and chants the divination spell to locate the frog. He concentrates on the sounds of nature around him until... You hear a frog? Ah, oh, cutie, hello, little guy. Let's haggle a good price for it. No, we're just giving it back. Uh, I find the frog and pick it up and give it to the Arzonian. Moy friend! Gosh, I missed you! The Arzonian hugs and pushes his cheek against his frog's head. They are both happy to see each other. Good job, my ranger king, Barbar. Whatever. Now, could you point us into the castle's direction? Of course he, 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 he says with his spirits uplifted. You just have to swim, or I guess for you, walk across those bridges over there, and that path should lead you to it. Great, let's go. But what about if we found some babes in an Arzonian hot tub or something? Uh, shake my head. Hmm. Okay, how about after we get the sapphire, we can all chill with the Arzonian babes, just for you. No, I want it now. Come on, Paladon. Let's stop getting distracted and progress through the story. I roll to push bitch tits off his rock. Stop. This fatty could be Kalos. I can't take any chances. It's for the greater good. For fuck's sake. Okay. Hmm. It's a success. Uh, you push the fat Arzonian into the water. He looks shocked. And then sad. He swims away with his frog. Why did you do that? I'm only human. After all, 
Okay, so the trio followed the directed path. Man, and- just look at all these cool Arzonians. These fish people actually remind me of my old friend, Justin Coleman. I still remember on the playground, we used to do the gritty and call him the Molman because he looked like a fish. Okay. You might be schizophrenic, Joey. Me too. After traversing the bridges, the trio find themselves Whoa. at Castle Arzonia. They enter to have an audience with the king. All right, good stuff, Benny. But we better leave before the water parks close. Yeah, good sesh, guys. We've made some progress today. We found a frog and walked to the castle. Great. I like it, Ben. We met so many Arzonians, and the waterfalls were beautiful. Yeah, you made your fantasy water kingdom feel so nice that we want to go swimming for real now. Thank you, thank you. The water park sounds great. I'll meet you guys there. I just have to go home and get my trunks. No, no, no. We always have to leave together. Never alone. Um... It's not safe. Yeah, I'm sure we can buy you some trunks at the park. Yeah, they should have some disabled shorts for you. Okay, okay, fine. I will come with you. (laughs) Who's ready to watch me 360 no-scope cannonball dive into the pool? Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Whoa! All right, then. A barman, Paladin, and Joey enter the castle and... how are you even here, Paladin? Didn't you get arrested? Yeah, but the court's in recess right now, so I thought I'd come play during the break. Understandable. Once you enter the castle, you see a regal Arzonian walk past. He looks down upon you and smirks. More heroes, huh? Or more fish food? The fuck does that mean? Okay, let me talk to the king. Fuck you, bloody. My charisma stat is higher. No, bloody fuck you. You pushed an innocent fat man into the water. Hello, they're fish people. I did him a favor. At the back of the throne room, you see an Arzonian figure sitting upon his royal chair. It is King Aquil, fourth of his name. Um... Are his eyes closed? Sleeping on the job? Lazy. Okay, so Ben, I will talk to the king. Um, greetings, King Aquil. We are Prez Amica, sent by the king of Regalia to obtain your celestial sapphire and save the world. Is he sleeping or dead? Hard to say. Is he faking it? The only one who's faking it is Melania when you sleep Shut with- the fuck up, you wrinkly nutsack! Can't your sleepy bitch ass tell if someone else is sleepy? Let's just talk a bit louder. Ah, of course. He must have water clogging his ears. Hello, King. Wake up. Good morning, sir. Wake up, you arsehole. Arsehole? Yeah, because he's Arzonian. We just arrived in this kingdom and you've already coined a racial slur for these people? What can I say? I'm cute. Bitch, I'm adorable. No, uh, you you used the phrase wrong, Joey. Who? Damn it. So how do we wake him up? Wish I had a polka flute, but that would only work to wake up Don. I don't get it. Hmm. Do we have any class skills we can use? I can't seem to find anything relevant for Ranger. I told you. I'm not reading my character sheet. Do I look like a fucking nerd? Maybe the king is suffering from blunt force head trauma, so I should heal him. Not everything requires your healing, Joey. To heal is to love, and everyone needs a bit of love sometime. Fuck, that's deep. All right, ladies, enough estrogen talk. Let's behead this lazy king and steal the sapphire. Yeah, let's do that. Wait, really? No, so shut the fuck up. Ah. It's okay, guys. I've got the perfect spell. What is it? It's called Thaumaturgy. I will manifest a minor wonder of supernatural power, which can do one of many effects. Thauma, what? Is this more Latin? What effects can it do? I can change the color of flames. Not helpful. Change my eye color. But why? Make a window or door fly open or shut. Can you make your mouth shut? I can cause some harmless tremors. No. Make my voice three times louder. Okay, that could work. That's lame. Why not just shout? This is like a shout, but three times louder. Just shout louder. Okay, Ben, I use thaumaturgy to make my voice louder for one minute. Very well. Huh. I should totally buy some audio volume equipment for this spell to increase immersion. Maybe some voice changers, too. It's okay. We're already immersed and can just use our imagination. Right. So Joey casts thaumaturgy to manifest a louder voice for visual purposes. Let's say he summons a spectral megaphone. Almighty King Aquil. I, Joey the Cleric, beseech you to hear my voice and my plea. We need you to awaken. Okay, we're not progressing here. Let's ask around or find somewhere else to go. Like a brothel. Okay, fine. I will heal him for real. I move closer to touch the king with my holy energy. As Joey moves his hands closer to King Aquil, you suddenly get surrounded. What the? You turn and see. Whoa. Hello. Gross. The Arzonian matriarchs and guards watch over you closely. Do you really think an outsider can walk in here and lay their hands on our king? Where am I? Your Honor, I am not guilty. What? Sorry, force of habit. Hmm, okay. I explained to them that we mean no harm. Would you like to do a charisma roll? That's my cue. Don't worry, guys, I've got this. Hello, can I speak to a man in charge? Uh, the matriarch is confused. 
and tells you she is in charge. Oh, you're a man. Um, no. She gets impatient and tells you she is a matriarch, a female Arzonian leader. Hmm. Okay, okay. Pardon me, milady. Is there a man I could talk to? For fuck's sake. Stop it, Paladon. You're going to get us canceled. Canceled? We're not E3. True. We're more like P3. What's the P stand for? Pussy. Presidents. Lame. So, the Arzonian royalty are confused and demand answers. Pardon me, my matriarchs. I'm a big fan of Arzonians. I love sushi so much. But we'd like to talk to a man in charge like the king. God damn it, Don. The women are in fucking charge. That's what matriarch means. How does that make any sense? What? For thousands of years, America has never had a female president. So it's a bit hard to imagine it in fantasy. Everything about that sentence is wrong. And I am now dumber from listening to it. Jesus Christ. Wait, Jesus exists in this world? Oops. No, that was my bad. I said it, not her. My immersion is ruined, disliked, unsubbed, reported. No. Okay. Now, where were we? I'm here. Okay, guys. So the matriarch saw Joey try to touch the king, and they are now paranoid and concerned. How do you respond? Okay, uh, I apologize on Paladon's behalf. I ain't sorry. And do a charisma roll to persuade them of Joey's intentions. A success. You got a 14. How would you like to persuade? I tell them Joey was worried about the king's unresponsiveness, and uh, that's why he tried to heal him. The matriarchs look you three up and down. We appreciate your concern. Alas. Our king is merely in a deep slumber. He is okay, despite the oncoming doom. Yeah, we're also here about the oncoming doom. We need your celestial sapphire to stop Kalos. No, dear. That is not the doom I speak of. There are more threats and dangers in this realm than just Kalos. Oh, no. Great, more problems. Just what we need. More lore incoming. The reason all the keepers haven't banded together already to go face Kalos is because we have more pressing and urgent matters to attend to. I cannot say what's going on in Mount Cristo or Imor Forest, but on the edge of Lake Ephetra lies a great evil, an evil that threatens all Arzonians. What is this evil, my matriarch, my fish queen? Underneath the bottomless ocean, the bottomless sea, lies the abyssal waters. A dark void, a wretched place, harboring indescribable horrors. All the waste and sorrow and regret carried by the sea eventually ends up there. The abyssal waters is a dormant domain filled with utter silence, a deafening silence powerful enough to push anyone into madness. Unfortunately, Arzonians have a heightened sense of hearing, which only exasperates this problem. We cannot stay down there for long, but humans can. Many of my people who have ventured into those waters have succumbed to insanity. I am not going there. Shush. Alas, the time has come to do something about it. You, adventurers, just like the many who have come before, you want us to part with our celestial sapphire, which we need to defend our people? A keeper's first and foremost priority is to protect his kingdom. I cannot allow the madness to escape the abyss. And I cannot give you the sapphire unless you prove yourself worthy. Tell us, O mighty matrimony, how can we be worthy for you? You must defeat the awakened horror known as the Abyssal Lochran. Its eternal slumber has come to an end and its hunger has begun. It will consume us all. So I say to you heroes, defeat it and bring peace to Arzonia. Then and only then we will deem you the Sapphire's Keeper. God damn. My goodness. I really hate water levels, Benny. This better not be like Zelda's water temple. Casual. How do we even get to this abysmal area? Is there going to be another road trip? No, it can be accessed from this kingdom. If you are crazy enough to accept this quest, you can enter the abyss by plunging from the Great Falls, a waterfall of death. But perhaps the death it brings is a mercy. For if you survive, it means you made it to the abyss. No thanks. Hope no one's afraid of heights. Or water. Me and Barack can't swim, so we're out. But I can swim. Sorry. I asked the matriarch how we are supposed to get down there without dying. There is no easy way for a human. That is something you will have to figure out on your own. We've had many heroes show up for the sapphire. None have returned. Most died just from plunging. You're just sending people to die without any help? If they need help, then they are not worthy of the sapphire. All right, then. We dive into the abyss, fight the boss, get the sapphire. Sounds easy. You boys probably don't need me. Are you scared, Paladon? Shut the fuck up. I'm not afraid of the dark or deep water. Now to figure out how to get down there. So do you accept the quest? All right. Yes. Prez Amica, solemnly swear to annihilate the abyssal Lochran monster and bring peace to your luscious, watery kingdom. Then off you go. You have disturbed our king's slumber long enough. But, Press Amica, I wish you all the luck. May the Divine Mother watch over you. Cool. We got the Celestial Sapphire quest going, guys. Now let's go ask around. Maybe the locals might know how to get down. Let's ask at a local bar or club, but not a gay orc one. As you leave the castle, 
you are stopped by a familiar face. You there, haha. <laughs> so you heard all the spiel from my mother, huh? The Prince of Arzonia, Aquil V. Looks like he's been waiting for you. Hello again, oh handsome prince. Uh, how can we be of service to you in this moment of, uh, um, wait, where am I? God damn it, Joey. Uh, hello, prince. Uh, could you help us out? That is exactly why I'm here. You see, I grow tired of seeing you outsiders die for our cause without even getting a chance to fight. Do you have any hot sisters, by the way? Meet me at the Great Falls. You can take an Arzola to get there. What's an Arzola? Hmm. It's like your land version of a chariot, but in water. So cool. That's great, Benny. Uh, but yeah, I have to be back in court real soon, and I have to eat. That's okay, Paladin. I think we can stop now and go get some grub. Also, wait, are we going to have our first boss fight in the next session? Possibly. Okay, guys. Well, in that case, I need to prepare. Who wants to go out and get some sushi? I'm so down. Sushi with the lads? How can I resist? God, I love sushi. The cute maki rolls and California rolls and dragon rolls. Whoa, mama, that looks good. I could probably take the leftovers after and hand them out in court, too. I'm sure that would lower my sentence. All right, then. Let's go. Yeah, let's run, boys. No offense, Ben. Free my boy Paladon. He's right there. Sorry I'm late, guys. All these Arzonians made me hungry for some fish and chips. Damn. So, you know, I had to get that good food on the way here. Looks so delicious. I have some leftovers if you guys want. Where? In my pocket. Uh, oh, come on, Don. You're getting sauce and salt all over the floor. There's not even any food. It's just salt. This is not good. Fine. Whatever. More for me. You guys are salty enough already. I'm glad you're not locked up anymore, Paladin. What? Oh, wait. Never mind, that was a different AI. Who? When? How was the UFC? Oh man, the crowd loved seeing me. Everyone was there to see me. I sat with Mike Tyson and Dana White. Did you kith? Tyson is so cool and White always says the right things. White is always right. White is so right. Might want to work on your phrasing. I'm ready to start, Benny. Right, right. So Oberman the Ranger, Paladon the Paladin, and Joey the Cleric make their way to the Great Falls. Prince Aquil is there to meet you, so you can access the Abyss and defeat the Lochran to bring peace to the Arzonian kingdom. And get that sweet celestial sapphire. Exactly. First boss fight should be fun. What could go wrong? Welcome, adventurers. I would be lying if I said I was glad to see you. What the fuck is your problem, bitch? Relax. Let's hear him out. I have a confession. I knew it. It's Kalos. I'm not a good person. I'm not listening to a word he's saying. Just let him progress the story. How can we trust him? I can assure you, I'm not Kalos. Perhaps I am a villain after all. I knew it. Get him, boys. Just wait. I'm going to ask you but one important question, and it will decide your fate. Okay. Do you like fish sticks? Um, what? No. Fish sticks? No, I do not. I. Okay, he's not a gay fish, guys. He's clear. Jesus. My ocular pat-down is complete. He's clear? Very well. Now listen to me. Too many people have been convinced by my mother to plunge into the abyss, and, and it's all for naught. You suicidal outsiders come to seek glory and you never return. Don't you see? It's all a sham. What do you mean, my dear handsome fish prince? You're just being used as a way to feed him. None of you stand a chance to defeat the Abyssal Lochran. Yo, what the hell, bro? We're Prezamika. We can beat anything. We understand your concern, but we have to do this. I too used to believe in my mother's idea, but now all I do is try to convince outsiders to stay away from the depths below. Why did you bring us here if you don't want us to go down? I knew I wouldn't be able to convince you anywhere but here where you can see the death you're about to plunge into. You're a good soul, Prince Aquil, but your consciousness weighs heavily upon you. Do not fret, for we promise to defeat the monster below so that your kingdom will be safe. And then you won't have to stop any more people from going into the abyss. Exactly. We want to help your people. And we need the sapphire to help the realm, so there's nothing you can say to stop us from going in. Yeah, Prince Achilles, step aside. I've been practicing my cannonball maneuver at the water park. The prince lets out a deep sigh. He seems to be tired of it all. It was foolish for me to try. But if I can't stop you from jumping in, the least I can do is help you down so you won't die from the fall, giving you a fighting chance. That would be very helpful, my friend. My fish. Okay, hurry up. But heed my final warning. No one has ever beat this monster. Countless heroes and adventurers have come before, and none have triumphed. You will truly need to do something remarkable to win. Otherwise, you will be eaten. Eaten? On second thoughts, I think we should just steal the sapphire. Be not afraid, Paladon, for we can do this and save the innocent Arzonians. I don't want to get eaten. You're probably going to be eaten first since you have the most meat. True, I agree. My dick is huge. Oh, my. Once we're down there, how can we get back up? Just follow the light. All right, then. 
We should hurry while the weather is good. Don't want a storm to come and ruin this. True. I'm tired of being screwed over by stormies. Let's move fast. I'd like to see you move fast for once. Is that a fat joke or are you hitting on me? Call me Joey. Okay, so Prince Aquil starts glowing. You feel light beneath your feet. And the ground moves away from you. What the? Prince Aquil uses his magic to make you float. Hey, this is fun. Yeah, it tickles. I will try to ease you down the Great Falls with this power. This ancestral Arzonian magic is partly why they're so adept at swimming. They can basically glide and float through water. However, it is limited. I can only gently float you down around halfway because of the weight. Oof, so heavy. God damn it, Don. Shut the fuck up. It's probably all the salt in my pocket weighing me down. I have so much pocket salt. Why did you steal all that salt? Lawyers are expensive, okay? You magically float through the air and are moved over the edge of the waterfall and start to descend slowly. Okay, boys, time for the abyss. Wonder if there's any hot, sexy abyssal babes down there. Don't look down. It's a big drop. Oh, gosh. You reach the halfway point of the Great Falls and then... The magic wears off. You fall and plunge into the abyss. You open your eyes and see nothing. Holy shit, we made it. Everyone okay? I can't see anything. It's completely black. What the fuck, Joey? The correct term is African-American. No. Press Amika have made it into the abyss, and they are completely enshrouded in darkness. All right, this would be a good time to prepare and maybe set out some strategies. How about new? And instead, we find some abyssy babes, a.k.a. some abussy. Did you actually fucking roll? Um, okay. Paladon rolls to search for some babes. He gets a 12 and succeeds in his perception search check or whatever. Woohoo, bring them to me. He looks around and sees nothing because he remembers he's in the wretched, horrible, lifeless abyss. Wow, what a surprise. Shit game. Can we do something about this darkness? Joey, does your thaumaturgy magic manifest light? Thaumaturgy lets me manifest a minor wonder. Can you stop manifesting minors, Joey? That's illegal. I'm reading my skill sheet and unfortunately I can't use thaumaturgy for light. Uh. Oh. But upon further reading... I have an evocation magic spell for a bright light. Woo! Woo! What's it called? It's called light. Great name. I call upon the teachings of evocation to incite this spell of light upon my staff, granting us visage in the abyss. Very well. In other words, shit is about to get lit. Joey conjures a holy beam on his staff, emitting a 20-foot radius of bright light. Good job, Joey. Thanks for the light. Now I can see the darkness much clearer. Paladon, you and I should also read our skill sheet to see I'm what- I'm not reading shit. Is it because you don't want to or don't know how to read? Yes. Can you feel it? What is it? Hmm. Must have been the wind. Anyways, the three adventurers walk deeper into the abyss. With nothing in sight, the silence only seems to get louder. With the shallow abyssal water beneath their feet. Until... Oh no. Could it be? It is. The abyssal locker awaits. Oh, he's kind of cute. He's not moving. Be careful. I've seen a lot of hentai, so I'm worried where this could go. Probably in your stomach when you try to eat it. Shut the fuck up, Joe! Bet you're real jealous of the Dalai Lama. Too soon. It's okay, just some tongue-in-cheek humor. God damn it. Oh yeah, I forgot you're a Buddhist Muslim Jew, Ben. I'm not, but anyway. Can we just take a moment to realize what we're up against? Like, damn Ben, you really dropped a cosmic horror eldritch-looking god as our first boss, huh? Um, I'll be honest. I'm just reading my notes and story, and I can't remember adding this. Great, now I have two friends with dementia. But why? If you didn't put the boss in, then who did? It was obviously Ben. Who's that? Did you guys forget all the cars that fell on his head? Why do I hear boss music? What? Oh shit, is it time? Oh no. Now, this is it. Now is the time to choose. Didn't ask. Die and be free of pain, or live and fight your sorrow. Damn, Joey, that's hardcore. I forgot the rest. I get it. This is it, Prez Amika. It's time to prove our worth. Our fate is in our hands. Yeah, we've beaten games like Dark Souls, so this should be easy. The Lochran rises forth from the abyss and turns to Joey, unleashing one of its wriggly tentacles to deliver a deadly slap. Ah! What the fuck? How can he slap? What the fuck, Ben? We weren't ready. I had way more speeches. The attack does 10 damage, and Joey is now poisoned. Oh my Allah, what the fuck, my poor Joey? That's almost his whole health. This boss slaps harder than Willie Smith. Okay, okay, enough messing around. Let's focus. We'll read our skills and figure out what to do. I ain't no reading. It's our turn now, right, Ben, so we can take our time? Yes, I think. Don't be too long. Okay, Joey, how you doing, buddy? You hanging in there? I'll try to find him. What? Joey, spend your turn healing yourself. Joey? Is he fucking napping? Fuck, okay. Giant octopus demon. Uh, what can I do? Paladon. Whilst I check my moves, you should do some first aid on Joey. Don't tell me what to do. It's okay, guys. The poison can't kill me. Correct. 
The poison will just make you roll with disadvantage now. So what will you do for your turn, Joey? Double it and give it to the next person. Nope. Why are you Warlock Joey now? I couldn't find him, but I did find Warlock Joey, and now I'm ready. Can you heal yourself? No, but I can do something even better. What's that? I'll save us. Oh, my Yahweh. I roll to conjure the mighty purple flame blade and unleash a devastating blow on Lochran. You're poisoned, Joey? Yeah, so you roll with disadvantage. Woohoo, snake eyes. Um, you got a nine and a one. Critical failure. No. Thanks for saving us. You conjure the purple flame blade, but can't tame the fiery evocation. It bursts and sets you on fire. No, fuck. My boy Joey. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck. I didn't expect this. What's wrong, guys? Stop, drop, and roll, Joey. Okay. No, for fuck's sake. Literally roll on the floor. Roll in the water to douse the fire. His turn is ended. Fine. Paladon will use his turn to push Joey so he falls on the water. And I will use my turn to cast the Goodberry transmutation spell and feed one to Joey. Great, let me roll to push his sleepy ass. No, we don't need to roll for this. Wait, gross, what the fuck? Why is the dice so greasy and salty? Wasn't me. God damn it. Okay, so Paladon pushes Joey onto the abyssal waters. They cleanse his body of the purple flame. Oberman conjures 10 berries and feeds one to Joey, restoring one HP and giving him sustenance. Thanks, Barbar, but now I'm wet. That's what Michelle said. Phew, okay, Joey is still alive for now. What can we even do to fight this thing? And where's my sword? Jesus fucking Christ. We came into this boss fight without getting Paladon a weapon. I have this heavy frisbee. That's a shield. Fucking shit. Can't believe I forgot about his weapon. Shit, shit. This is all my fault. How is it your fault? I should have been smarter. I'm a fucking idiot. Don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah, you really messed up, O'Barman. Shut the fuck up, Paladon. This is all your fault. No, no, no. This is all your fault, Joey. I knew it. Um, so... The Lochner attacks again, targeting Joey once more with a writhing heavy tentacle. What the shit? Why Joey? Joey takes another 10 damage. He is now at zero HP. Wait. Zero HP? No, 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 no. Does that mean... Please, no. Zero HP doesn't mean death. But he is now unconscious and close to dying and being out forever. Fuck, fuck, okay. There's some relief, I guess. Joey can still survive with some death-saving throws or healing. You need three success rolls to survive. Three fails or a devastating attack means death. One to nine is a fail and being hit will also count as a fail. 10 to 20 is a success. Rolling a 20 counts as one HP and you become stable. Rolling a one counts as two failures. All these numbers, do I look like I care about maths? Joey needs three success rolls to be stable, one per turn. I don't like putting Joey's life up to chance. I use my turn to feed Joey another good berry. You put the berry into his unconscious mouth and he swallows, healing one HP and avoiding death, for now. My hero. Guys, this is terrible. We can't lose on the first boss. We need to see this through till the end. We need to finish the story. I rolled to throw my... No, 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 don't throw your shield and lose it again. Let's think about this. Stop fucking ordering me Why around. don't you read your fucking skill sheet, you useless fuck? I don't take orders from your kind. Now, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Why would I take orders from someone like you? You're a real piece of shit. I'd you... never take orders from an archer ranger. Oh, that's what you... Right, okay. What? Your phrasing is terrible. Why would I listen to your class? Uh... Especially when I'm the leader. Bitch, please. Anyone who says they're the leader is far from the leader. Wow, what a leader thing to say. Fuck. Now listen to me. Stop being extra fucking annoying when Joey keeps getting close to dying. It's okay, I can take him. Listen, how hard can this thing be? It looks tiny, that's not a lot of tentacles. And... The Lockman emerges even further from the abyss, and then... Oh, give me a break. I'm out. He attacks again, swiping his tentacles straight towards Joey. Oh, hamburgers. Rendering him unconscious once more and on the brink of death. For fuck's sake, Paladon didn't even get to take his turn. What do we do? I don't know what to do. How many times do I have to tell you to read your fucking skill sheet? I'm scared. Yeah, it's okay. I understand. Shut up, pussy. Sorry. Why does it keep attacking Joey, though? Three times in a row? Hmm. He must be trying to protect his octopus kids. Wait, I know. It must be the light from the staff. One who lives in darkness fears the light? Is it weak to light or just hates it? Not sure, but I know we need to get that light away from Joey. Okay, I will grab Joey's beaming staff and throw Let it- Let me do it. My strength stat is higher. Okay. I grab Joey's beaming staff and I throw it as far as possible away from us. As soon as Lockman sees Paladin wielding the light staff, it launches a devastating tentacle whip attack towards him. No, I can't die, please. Uh... I do an agile feet reaction roll to dive in front of Paladon. What the fuck? Oh my. Okay, it's a success. You dive in front of Paladon and take 15 damage. You lose all your HP and are on the brink of death. You fucking idiot. Now what do I do? 
Hello? Are you guys deaf? Bitch, we're unconscious. I'm all alone. Why did... Why would you do that to me, you asshole Obarman? You don't even have a shield. What an idiot. Am I right, Shabibo? Lochran has rendered two of your comrades unconscious and close to death. What will you do? I attack Ben. Stop that. So you can talk. Fine, I'll read my skills, SMH. Shake my head. Hmm. Okay, zone of truth. Daylight. Eh, that won't be good. Aid? Wait, I can give you aids? Read it carefully. Up to three targets within range. Each target's max HP and current HP increases by five. Wait, what the fuck? I can heal? You are a divine paladin with holy magic after all? I knew that. Okay, I give my aids to my bros Obermin and Joey. Very good. You cast the Abjuration spell aid to buff your allies and help them regain their consciousness. That's my man. Look at you coming in clutch. Hiya, I'm back. Ha! What's the point of Cleric Joey when I can heal and save your asses much better? I'm a warlock. I also have healing hands to protect from poison. I could use that. Okay. I dip my healing balls onto Joey to cure his poison. You already did your main action for the turn? Can I roll again? On your next turn. Whatever. Okay, now what? We've barely survived and done no damage to this thing. The Lockman swings again, but this time wider than ever, sweeping across the floor, targeting everyone in his way. Damn it. Okay, get ready to dodge, guys, and put your shield up. I do an agility roll to evade the attack. I put my shield up. I'm poisoned. Joey gets hit and falls unconscious again. Oberman rolled an eight. He was able to dodge most of it, but was still grazed by the large tentacle. He loses four HP, and Paladon was pushed back by the tentacle attack and loses three HP. Bullshit. Okay, I'm still alive, but barely. Don't you die on me, too. I don't have much left in me. Maybe I can shoot one arrow, but what will that do? Shut up, shut up. You're gonna be okay. Jesus, how am I supposed to do this alone? I have to carry you guys as always. Fuck this stress. Do you even know how much I've got on my plate? Yeah, you need smaller portions. Shut the fuck up. You're unconscious. To... This is too stressful. And when I stress, I eat. Oh, God, let me see if I have any chips in my pocket. Mm. Let me add some pocket salt to them. Wait, what did you say? Good gimbal. Paladon, you genius. Thank you. Okay, so do you guys know about osmosis? Who is that, a Muslim? Never mind, I just need you to hand me some of that salt. Ah, uh, you're a stress eater too, I see. Welcome. Octopuses, tentacles, sea creatures, they're weak to table salt. Don't they live in salt water? No time to explain. Osmosis, dehydration, give me that salt. Okay, I get it. I roll to use my ultimate move and throw... Okay. No. Pocket salt! You roll a two, you throw salt at the abyssal Lochran, but the distance is too far and it lands in your eye. You now suffer from temporary blindness for one turn. Bullshit. The Lochran gets angry and begins to charge up his own ultimate move. Okay, okay, okay. We're basically dead unless I can get this right. Paladon, give me that leftover salt. I can't see, so take it. All right, I rub one arrow with salt. Finish it, Barak. Do it, Barbar. -bar. With my broken body and a disadvantage roll. I aim my bow and I cast the conjuration. Hail of arrows. My goodness. It's a success. Obarmin launches his single salted arrow afar, straight towards the abyssal Lochran. The arrow glows and splits apart into a cataclysmic salty rain of arrows, showering the Lochran in piercing and stinging pain unlike it's ever felt. And it's a killing blow. Oh my fucking God. I... We fucking did it. We fucking did my heroes, it. My champions, my salty boys. The salt seeps into the skin of the abyssal Lochran. Osmosis takes over. The shriveled, shrunken, salted head of the mighty terror lands before your feet. Gross. Don't think I'll have calamari for a while. Help. Oh, right. I give my boy Joey another berry to get him back on his feet. Hi, guys. Man, oh, man, oh, mama, that was one epic fight. Good job, guys. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. Yeah, listen, I knew all about osmosis and osmoslims and science, which is why I brought all this salt. Yeah, sure. You guys were amazing. It was looking kind of scary at the end. It was a close one. But we pulled through. Definitely got to prepare better next time. Can't risk losing you guys. That reminds me. Give me my staff back, Paladin. It's covered in salt. As you gather your bearings and let the adrenaline of the fight simmer down, you see a beam of light ahead. Whoa. Okay, that must be our way out, boys. Paladin, grab the head so we can show the matriarchs and let's hurry out this hellhole. Don't tell me what to do, but I'll do it because you're my bro. Golly gee, guys. I'm speechless. I'm buzzing. I'm shaking. Hope you enjoyed sleeping through all of that boss fight. Hope you enjoyed whining and pissing yourself through all of that boss fight. Huh. I'm glad we're all okay. The triumphant heroes known as Press Amika walk through the beam of light and exit the abyssal lake, victorious over their first boss. May all our battles end this way. They will. Yeah, if we can defeat this horrific abyss octopusy god, then how exactly is that clown Kalos going to stop us? <laughs> You're right, Don. This should be easy. 
I'm feeling way too good, man. Guys, don't underestimate him. It's fine, Joey. We'll be ready. Man, I need something to balance all this salt. Want to go get dessert? I could certainly do with some good old American cheesecake. I would love some Oreo cheesecake right now. Oh, golly, pip, pip, ahoy. Let me have some strawberry crumbly cheesecake with the vanilla swirls. Oh, God, I'm salivating. I'm going to have them all. Just don't steal any. Whatever. You'll thank me in the future when I give you pocket cheesecake. All right, then, you awesome lads. Let's go to the Cheesecake Factory. Woohoo! 